From the hustle and bustle of the big city, 90 minutes southeast of Melbourne, a change of pace. Where Port Phillip Bay meets Bass Strait, Phillip Island, permanent population just 12,000, drawing tourists from all over the world. A surfing haven, renowned for its big... At the 16th FINA World Short Course Championships here in Melbourne. Hello and welcome to the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre here on Albert Park Lake in the Victorian capital. I'm Mike McCann, it's day five of the championships, the second last day, and it is a beautiful, warm day for competitors and spectators alike. With me is Bobby Hurley. Welcome along, Bobby. The crowd is building up. It's going to be another fantastic session, but what four nights we've had so far. Yeah, it's been a really exciting World Championships in Melbourne, and uh, the crowd has built throughout the week. The weather's gotten better and better, and the Australian team, they've performed so well at these championships to challenge the United States on that gold medal tally. Can't wait for more. Good racing this morning on day five. This is what is about to occur here this morning over the next uh, two or three hours. We've got the heats on day five of six, starting with the medley relays, the 4x50 medley relays. Uh, the individual medley, the longest of them, the 400s there, the 100 butterflies and uh, we'll ultimately have the slowest heats there of uh, the 800 metres freestyle, the, uh, the uh, fastest heat coming up this evening. OK, what about last night, Bobby? Oh, an upset to start it off. The French team mixed 4x50 free relay. They broke the world record. Star-studded field there. Manadou really proved to be the game-changer, swimming that second leg. And then the United States, they're having a great world championships, as they always do. Kate Douglas winning the women's 200 breaststrokes, gold and silver in that event on the women's side. And Diaceto, gold again in a new event for him at this point in his career, the men's 200 breaststroke. And uh, Maggie McNeil getting Canada's gold medal tally started. She broke her own world record in the women's 50 backstroke before we saw Marit Steenbergen from Netherlands claim her first individual gold medal in the women's 100 individual medley. And the men's race, that was very tightly contested. Thomas Cechon, the Italian star, touching the wall first. And what a controversial finish this was. Ryan Murphy wins the rematch in the men's 50 back, taking gold ahead of Isaac Cooper and Lani Pallister. Gold medal number four in the women's 1500 freestyle. We finish things off with 
the 4x200 free relay. United States gold again, this time in a world record time. Six relay world records have gone down here in the waters of the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre. Fantastic night of swimming. In fact, the medals were shared around last night. I wonder which of these swimmers might uh, be looking at medals later on today. We're talking about the first of the races here, the women's 4 by 50 metres medley relay. Yes, those medals last night, uh, the United States picking up three golds, uh, France, Japan, Canada, the Netherlands, Italy and Australia also getting gold medals last night. So it was uh, a nice spread, although the United States um, winning the bulk of them. Out to the warm-up pool. Yeah, a lot of, lot of stars in the water this morning because we're going to kick things off with the women's 4x50 medley relay. Two hits in that, so the United States and Australia, they'll go head-to-head -head in the first of the heats. The officials being introduced. And uh, there we have the names of the officials. Zumiya Gucci and David Cooper, the starters. And the two referees there, Daphne Burden. Dennis Caddon. So, as I mentioned, the women's 4x50 metres medley relay, we have uh, two heats ahead of us, and that will begin the program. The USA is setting that world record of the, the uh, World Championships, the 14th World Championships in uh, Hangzhou, China, back in December 2018. And uh, some familiar faces coming out to swim in the first race here. Australians leading them out. Kaylee McEwen, Jenna Strosh, Emma McKeon's there, and Matty Wilson. So they're all out, out in there in lane number eight. Let's have a look at uh, the teams in this first heat. So Italy not starting, leading lane three vacant, but we'll have uh, the USA and Canada in the middle lanes. Australia, as I mentioned, out in lane eight, Japan in one. Yeah, the Australians fielding a strong team this morning. They don't want to make a mistake and miss this final. McEwen, Strosh, McKeon will swim the butterfly leg and Wilson on the freestyle. Away on day five with the first of two heats here, the women's 4x50 medley. Canada in lane number five being led off by Will Walsh, the United States. Down there in eight, it's Kaylee McEwen, Australia. Well, I don't know if Walsh just missed the start there, but it was a terrible one at that. She's well behind the United States in the top of the yellow lanes. Walsh almost in second last position. We don't normally see her in the backstroke, but this could be big if the United States, if something was to happen. Canada lead it through with Will. The Australians and McEwen also having a good split there, but uh, in the water for the United States, Annie Laser. They've got some work to do in the middle of the pool. And in lane number seven there, just above the Australians, is the Czech Republic. They got off to a good start through Kapova. They've got Horska in the water now, swimming the breaststroke. And uh, they're right up there. Japan up in lane number one, almost on level terms with the Canadians in five. Yeah, interesting race now. It will be Canada just ahead of Japan. They've been strong on the sprint relays on the men's and women's side, the Japanese team. That's a good changeover from McKeon of Australia. Swimming at the bottom of the pool. Butterfly this time for McKeon. And up there, that suitor for Japan, still holding the lead. So they come down to complete the butterfly, and Japan have taken over the lead. And uh, as we get to the final leg here, Jinna in the water for Japan. It is uh, Smith of Canada. Janika of the Czech Republic and Maddie Wilson, Australia, and the United States looking to make up some lost ground through Hines. Yeah, they're in fourth, the United States. It's uh, a little bit of a danger position. Hines trying to just move up on the Canadians there. Wilson now looks like Australia have taken over the lead. They get Japan at the end, and they win the first heat. 144-78. Wilson swimming strongly, Australia, Japan. Canada and the United States in fourth. After that, 
terrible lead up on the backstroke leg there from Alex Walsh. We'll wait to see what happened off the start there. But uh, the United States certainly in danger of maybe missing this final, which would be very upsetting news. Here's the start. Walsh in four there. You see one leg slipped there. Her left leg is slipped off the starting wedge. She's basically just jumped with one leg. Obviously, compared to everyone with two. And as they come up, she's more than a body length behind. Not a traditional backstroker as Alex Walsh. So, just slipped, which is not a technical error. That's just a skill error right there from the United States. Australia in 144.78, beating Japan and Canada. So, we keep an eye on that time in the USA, 146.58. Top eight times, of course, determining which teams go through to the middle round this evening. Well, looking at it here, Sweden are the fastest qualifiers. They're in lane four. Netherlands next to them. France, there's from the 18 this morning. China. There's, a, there's four teams that could threaten that spot from the United States. I can't find a fifth that would knock them out of the final. But uh, anything can happen in these 4 by 50 meter relays. Toussaint will lead off the Netherlands. They have lane five, the South Africans in lane seven. Rakapoulos. Start China through Peng in three, Ross Bale of Sweden, lane four, the Netherlands led off by two sons, lane five, and France with Pigri. Yeah, quick off the blocks is Toussaint from the Netherlands, she always is, but up there in lane one swimming well is Kim from Korea, just gets beat off the turn there, it's uh, in the middle of the pool now, Pigri from France. Moving up, not much separates them after 50 metres. And now they've got the youngster, the Koreans, up there in lane number one. That is Moon Sua. She is uh, back in probably about third, but there's not much between four teams in lane four, Sweden, the Netherlands, France, and then the Koreans. Yeah, good breaststroke leg there from Thormarm of Sweden. They look good there in the top of the yellow lanes. France, that's Charlotte Bernay swimming the breaststroke leg. They've got Henique and Gastadello to come. So really strong four swimmers this morning from the French team for the Netherlands. Good change over there from Univic. We saw her really fly underwater in the butterfly backstroke events this week. So Sweden with a body length over France. We're in second place at the moment. The Netherlands in between that pair in third and uh, back to Korea in lane one in fourth placing. So we're waiting for the freestylers to dive in there. And this is a very handy lead for the Swedes. Asted, it is in the water now for Sweden. You've got yeah. Van Roon for the Netherlands and Gastadello for France. Yeah, the first three teams should be safe. The Swedish team without Sostrom and Coleman at these championships. Still looking really good in this sprint medley relay. Underwater there, that's Gastadello. The Netherlands should move safely through. Good race at the top of the pool. That time will be important if the US were to miss. 144.8 for Sweden. Means the US should be safely through. Sweden ahead of France and the Netherlands. It's a sigh of relief for the United States there. Yeah, as it turned out, they'll go comfortably through. The uh, fifth the quickest here, China 148.32. The United States were 146.58. So USA OK, but uh, they'll want to rectify the problems they had in the heats by the time the final comes around. Yeah, well, they'll go through seven. I'm not sure how comfortable that is, but they're in the final anyway. Uh, Sweden there putting it together to take heat two. They'll bring in Michelle Coleman tonight. Here's the result of heat two. 144.83 for Sweden. It's a, just a touch slower than Australia in the first heat. France and the Netherlands 
after that with the Koreans 148-24. Eight teams to swim for gold, silver and bronze this evening. Australia, Sweden, France, Japan. The Netherlands, Canada, USA, seventh and the Czech Republic will take lane number eight. It's an ancient career, not quite quick enough. 148-24. Onto the men's 4x50 medley relay now. That uh, world record set last year. That was uh, in Russia by the Italians at 130.14. Championship record set in Doha, Qatar, eight years ago. Start list for the first of three heats here, Spain not starting, lane seven empty. So we end up with Hong Kong and New Zealand in four and five. Brazil in lane six will be hard to beat. China in three. Yeah, three heats like you mentioned. So a bit more depth in this men's medley relay. Top eight will move through. So times in this first heat will be very important. in lane two, Pienberg leading them off, Wang for China, Quan of Hong Kong, Dell of New Zealand and Colo Santos of Brazil. Yeah, it's a strong team on paper for the Netherlands. The backstroke might be their weakest leg. I haven't really seen Pienberg race the 50 back, but you can see he's strong underwater. They lead there in the black cap at the top of the screen. We'll have a look at the time Pienberg can post. 23.89, so it's not too fast on the opening leg, but Casper Corbo jumps in the water now. Wow, what a pull out that was. He's got almost a full body length over Kin from China, who's in second position right now, and the team from New Zealand in third. Now, in, in three heats of this mix, uh, this medley relay, they will want to win. This, this, the team that comes second will definitely not be guaranteed a spot in the final, so these guys touching the wall first is very important in this race. Costanya in the water now for the Netherlands. China have uh, Chen. So it's between those two teams at the moment. Back in third place, uh, New Zealand with Cameron Gray. So they've got about 10 to swim in the butterfly before they get to the last leg swimmers. It's going to be Simons of the Netherlands, Wang of China, and for New Zealand, Carter Swift. Yeah, look at that changeover from Simons. Kenzo Simons, really good across that first 25 metres. He builds a nice lead over China. So the time here important for the Dutch team to just post something fast in the first heat. They're going to take it out. We'll have a look at the clock. 133-20. China, Hong Kong, and New Zealand finish that one off. Strong performance there from the Netherlands. Still two heats remaining. But uh, if any of these teams have progressed to the final, it will be the Netherlands. I, I can't see how the remaining teams would have posted a fast enough time. That was the last changeover. Not much separated them at the 150, but first 25 from Simons was very quick. And at the finish there, he posts a split time of 20.9. And on the finish, doesn't have the straight arm freestyle that we're so used to seeing. Almost jams up on that wall. That's a, that's a too tight of a finish in the sprint freestyle events. So in the end, just over a second separating the Netherlands and China. First and second, with Hong Kong third, big one. making their way out. This is going to be a really interesting heat. The United States have lane four, Japan in five, and Australia in six. An interesting heat two ahead of us. 
There's the Australian team. Cooper will lead off on the backstroke leg. Let's watch for that. Grayson Bell, champion, and Southam. And uh, the United States there in four, just above Japan. Hunter Armstrong, Fink, Julian, and Kieran Smith. Africa in lane two. Take your marks. So the United States led off by Hunter Armstrong, Australia in six. Isaac Cooper, after the disappointment, the drama of last night, he looks to be going OK. Yeah, he's got to pick himself up after last night. Of course, posted the fastest time in the pool in the 50 backstroke, but wasn't awarded the gold medal. He's having a good swim, as is Kotze from South Africa. It's going to be Cooper touching first, 22.95. Gets the Australian team out to a good start. 1-100th over South Africa, but geez, that changeover changed things. Right there, Nick Fink in the water for the American team, chasing down Grayson Bell of Australia. This is where it changes. Fink, the super breaststroker there. Bell trying to stay with him through in between them. It's Hinamoto of Japan. So the United States over Australia and Japan at the halfway. Yeah, big split there from Fink. Look at the lead. He just gives Trent and Julian the 200-metre flyer. He's got to have to move a little bit quicker here in the 50. Kawamoto for Japan. He's lightning quick underwater. And Sean Champion gets his chance to represent Australia for the first time. And back there in fourth place would be Ukraine and then Paraguay and South Africa. Into the last leg now. Kieran Smith there for the USA. Matsui, Japan, South of Australia. Yeah, Smith, the 400 free champion, and Mitsui is the pure sprinter. Japan getting their feet on the wall first through the first 25. Mitsui's impressed all week, and he looks to be getting the better. So it's going to be Japan, or oh, maybe not big finish here for the United States. Japan just holding on over the USA, and uh, Australia in third placing. So that winning time, 132.65 for Japan. And it was two one hundredths of a second in front of the USA. Yeah, Japan. This was the last changeover. Kieran Smith diving in. All six foot six of him. He got beat for speed on the first lap. But off the turn, Mitsui there in the black cap of Japan. He's been crucial on relays, but he's a lot shorter than his American counterpart. Down to the touch, Smith with those long strokes. Looked like he was going to reach out and get it, but the timing of Mitsui... Look, Mitsui's ahead in front, but Smith almost touches him out. Two one hundredths of a second. And uh, Japan take that one. United States, Australia in third. Slower than what we saw from the Netherlands team in the previous team. So, the Netherlands... Their time definitely stacking up. So there was a review there, but all clear. All clear here with um, the placings. He too, Japan, United States, Australia, and Ukraine. That's uh, winning time by the Netherlands, 133.2. That was in heat number one. So it is uh, going to be interesting to see how the teams in heat three, the last of them go here. Uh, find out who goes through it to the final in the men's 4x50 medley relay. Germany, Norway, Turkey, Italy, and Chinese Taipei and France. So Canada deciding not to swim here.
take your marks. So France out there in lane number seven. They're going to be hard to beat here. And Doy Brouard leading them off. The Italians led off by Moore in four. Yeah, strong team on paper from France, Italy and Germany. They're scattered through this whole heat. Germany turning first at the 25. It's pretty tight through the backstroke. Mora, a medalist here in the 100 backstroke at this meet. Touching in third for the Italian team. Germany getting them off to a strong start with Ulrich and Lucas Matzerats in the water for the breaststroke. And down there in lane number seven in the white cap, it's Vicare of France. So they are up there as well. In fact, they're in second place. The Italians third, but the lead continues to be held by Germany. At least it was held by Germany. Norway starting to go through in lane two. Three of them across the pool. Germany, Italy, France. Oh, some big names in the water now. That's Kush for Germany, Check on for Italy, and Grousseau for France. So the big three moving through now. Again, times and placings will be important. And this is where the race starts to open up. The fly into the fastest leg of the freestyle. Coming in the last changeover, Moresi will swim for the Italians. And Florent Manadou for France. So it's still Germany in front from Italy and France. And we will bring it home with the freestylers now. It's Salcho of Germany. The Italians with Moresi and Manadou for France as they turn now. As we look right across the pool there. Germany going through in the middle. It's Italy. Italy look like they'll probably take it out just in front of France and Germany. And uh, fourth home was Norway. So a time there, 132.31. 132.31. Fourth fastest time, a 134.43. So in the heats, it's all about looking for those top eight times. Australia safe. They'll get through in seven. So a near scare for the Australian men, almost very similar to what we saw from the United States women. It'd be big if any of those two nations were to not make the final. And uh, so they will move through, but uh, a good swim from Germany just got beaten on the freestyle leg. They used their A team this morning. There's Manadu, closest to screen. Big straight up stroke, takes a breath. So very relaxed this morning through the heats. World record last night in the 4x50 free relay. And the Italian men, well, they broke the world record in the 4x100 free relay early this week in Melbourne. Italy, France, Germany. What's that? Um, about a quarter of a second between first and second, and only three one hundredths of a second back to Germany. It's going to be a really interesting final. Italy and France, the fastest qualifiers. Germany and Japan, the United States, the Netherlands, and Australia and China. The eight teams to swim for medals. Ukraine, Norway, the first two to miss out. A lot to look forward to this evening. The women's 400 individual medley we have four heats ahead of us here and three starters in heat one in Chinese Taipei Hong Kong and Guatemala so the longest of the individual medleys here. Four heats ahead of us. That world record set by Maria Belmonte Garcia. That was in Eindhoven, the Netherlands, five years ago. Summer McIntosh uh, recently breaking the world junior record. Uh, the wonderful Canadian teenager. She's not here at the moment, though. So three of them in the first heat with the uh, major of Guatemala. Ung of Hong Kong and Chen of Chinese Taipei. They've got four laps of each of these strokes, and uh, there's not too much between them as they've completed the first, say, 70 metres. Yeah, that world record, as you mentioned, from Maria Belmonte, five years old, 418.9. She went 419 back in 2014 at the Doha World Championships, and that time would be very, very competitive now because our fastest entry in Heat 4, while well, the defending world champion is Tessa Setlucha. 
from Canada with a time of 4.25, which is a margin of well over six seconds. So the women's 400 individual medley in the water now, we've got Chen, Hung, and Misha. But as we move through to the seeded heats, without, with the absence of Summer McIntosh, who's the long course world champion, there's uh, not much depth in this event. Uh, at the world stage at the moment, we've got the last heat, Flickener and Leah Smith, Abby Wood. There's two Canadians, Pickram and Seth Lucia. They'll be strong. And uh, Sonato from Italy will swim in the second to last heat. So no clear favourite in this one. Looking forward to watching uh, the latter heats and then, of course, the race for tonight's final and the gold medal. So as they work their way down this uh, backstroke leg here, there's uh, nothing between lanes four, uh, four and three. In lane number five, though, it is uh, the Chiva Mia of Guatemala. Just uh, 15 years of age. She's got an entry time of 5.03.61, and she's uh, leading. Well, she was leading, but things changed on that turn very, very quickly. So she struggled on the turn, and that's allowed uh, Ung of Hong Kong, the 17-year-old, with an entry time 4.52.39 to take over the lead here. Yeah, well, she did this old-school bucket turn, it's called Misha. She led after the backstroke and did a proper backflip, pushing off the wall, and then uh, rushed a breaststroke pull-out, which is an extremely difficult turn to do. It's not really known as the fastest way to do a back-to-breast turn anymore, and Paul just did the traditional touch, breathe, and go and uh, could put a little bit more time and energy into that streamline and pull out and you can see the advantage she got there over Misha, who's just dropping back now to the first 50 metres of breaststroke. Chen now from Chinese Taipei looks to be slightly ahead. The breaststroke is normally where this longer IM race really starts to just unravel and see lead changes and see who's still got energy at the back end of the race to, uh, to, to, to try and win. And you told us the other day the uh, 100 metres individual medley, you could pretty much fake the breaststroke. Uh, I don't think that's the case in the 400. No, no, definitely not. With uh, Everybody loves the short course 100 IM because even if you have a weak stroke, you can fake it. You can stay underwater on the backstroke. You can, you know, just rate up on the breaststroke or whatnot. So it's an enjoyable race to swim and even though it's 100 meters you, you've got to attack it as if it's a 50 meter sprint because it's only one lap of every stroke but the 400 im not so enjoyable you definitely can't fake any part of that you need endurance skills turns uh you know be able to swim all four strokes you need speed at the beginning of the fly you need to be able to finish off on the freestyle so the 400 im you've you, is really a battle of the most versatile swimmers of the world. You've really got to tick every single box if you want to be world-class in this one. Well, they're um, now at the 375 metre mark, so they're bringing it uh, home now to complete heat number one. Suzanne Chen of Chinese Taipei is uh, out by three quarters of a length over Lei Yung of Hong Kong. Uh, she records a time here, 4.44.97, had uh, third place as Mia of Guatemala. So she timed it nicely. She just stayed with, first of all, Maya, and then it was Ung who took over the lead, and Chen was able to just assert her authority. She's uh, the oldest swimmer in, of this trio and the most experienced, and she was able to take the heat here. Yeah, again, as we're used to seeing, she made that move on the breaststroke leg. She turned third at the halfway mark before taking over a slight lead in the breaststroke and then continuing on to finish the race and take out heat one. Chinese Taipei from Hong Kong and Guatemala. Heat one of four. There's the start list for... The next of our races, heat number two. Now, heat uh, lane five is missing there. The Serb, Anya Craver. Stay to the 
And that leaves us with uh, My Rasmussen of New Zealand. In lane number three, it's Dennis Erton of Turkey. Dakota Tucker, the South African, is in lane num the number four. We jump down to lane six. It's Portia Brown of uh, Puerto Rico and uh, Iman Adbik of Bosnia and Herzegovina in lane number seven. Yes, yeah, second of the, the heats and last of the unseated heats. So we've got uh, 16 swimmers still to come racing for eight spots in tonight's final. And uh, it is Tucker from South Africa looking strong through the first 50 metres. The South Africans having a really great championships here in Melbourne. And uh, Tucker's only 18 years of age, so getting good experience racing here in, uh, in multiple events. And also swimming well is Ertan. We saw her in the 1500 free final last night, performing strongly. And Rasmussen from... New Zealand up the top there in two. She was a finalist at the Commonwealth Games earlier this year in the long course pool. So 12 laps to go here into the backstroke. Lane four it is, Tucker, Tan and uh, Rasmussen. Stroke for stroke in three and two respectively. And uh, then we go down to Brown, uh, Puerto Rico and uh, the swimmer from Bosnia and Herzegovina. That's Advic there in lane number seven. Just uh, half a length behind Brown. The, the clear-cut leader here, Dakota Tucker. This 18-year-old um, from South Africa. And uh, she's uh, leading it now by just over a second from Russ Musson of New Zealand. Yeah, still a long way to go, but Tucker swimming strongly on the backstroke leg, as is Rasmussen there in two. So they come up to the halfway mark just at the end of this backstroke leg. The South Africans, they, uh, they swim well in the individual medley races. Matthew Sates on the men's side winning the 200 IM early this meet. He'll have the 400 IM later on this morning or in the next event, uh, the next heat in fact, um, which should be exciting to see how he races in the longer race. At the moment it's Tucker. She's got a lead of about two metres over Erasmussen who's Looking strong in this first part of the breaststroke again. This is where the field will open up. They've got entry times of 4.38 for Tucker and 4.41 for Rasmussen. I think they're going to go much quicker than that here in Heat 2. Well, the lead is still there for Dakota Tucker of South Africa, but it's uh, narrowing by the stroke, and you'd reckon the New Zealander might just about lead as they turn after 250 metres. Yes, she's taken over in front. In second place, Tucker, and uh, holding down third. In lane number two, it's a, a town of Turkey. Bit of a distance back to the other two swimmers there. Portia Brown of Puerto Rico in lane six, and Iman Adbic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. But uh, she's strong, isn't she? Rasmussen in the breaststroke here. She's uh, looking very good. She leads it by a second, so she's turned it round by a couple of seconds over the space of about 75 metres. Yeah, breaststroke, the strongest of her individual strokes, Maya Rasmussen. And uh, as you mentioned, she opens it up there. We'll see what that lead looks like after 300 metres. 1.7 seconds, so Tucker's going to try and chase her down, but turning there at 331. So her entry is 441, but Probably looking at a time of 4.35, 4.34 maybe this morning, which potentially can be competitive for a top eight position. Tucker doesn't look like she's making any ground in that race. For second, Ertan, the freestyle specialist, really swimming strongly over the first 50, but Rasmussen is uh, well and truly in front right now. Yes, she's uh, looking for a good heat win here. She's just got a lap and a half to go. And uh, she is clearly in front in second place of Tan, and then uh, Tucker, and then we go back to that uh, other pair, Advich, just in front of Brown. She turns now to bring it home. Lanes two from three and four in heat number two here. That entry time once again for our race leader, 4.41.81. She'll go considerably quicker than that, 4.36.08. Excellent swim in heat two. Tan second. Just over two seconds back, and Tucker in third. Great swim there for Maya Rasmussen. 436.0 takes five seconds off her entry time. 
and uh, continues to improve the 22-year-old from New Zealand. Gibson trains in Brisbane. At, uh, swimming at Somerville House in Brisbane, Queensland. A really strong and rising swimming club there. And uh, that training paid off through the back half of this form that I am. They couldn't match her on the breaststroke leg. And uh, she powers home to a personal best time. Results of heat two, New Zealand, Turkey and South Africa. Um, our next heat, the second last of them. Now, Sydney Pickram's not down there, so it's um, one of the big names that's out. Tuzanato with Italy in five. So let's have a look at these swimmers. We've got two Australians out there in one and two. They'll be swimming alongside each other. It's uh, Emily Muir and Kayla Hardy, one and two. Susanna Jacobus, who was uh, seventh in Abu Dhabi at last year's World Championship. She's in three. Pick from a non-starter. And then you're down to lane number five with Ilaria uh, Kasamoto. Yi of China. Is in lane number six, Kabori of Japan and uh, Trinkova of Slovakia. The second of the Australians, or lane two of the Australians, out in front, that's Kayla Hardy. Yeah, Hardy and Muir, the two Australians, on uh, international debut here. They're rookies, and this is their first swim of the championships on the fifth morning of heat. So Kayla Hardy, based in Canberra, doing a really good job through her preferred butterfly leg to open up a decent lead here in this 400 iron minute point nine. It is aggressive on the front end. And uh, Cusinato there, the experienced Italian from a touching second, but I don't come much more experienced than Jakobos, the Hungarian, swimming in lane three. She's been to five Olympic games already at the age of 33 and still swimming strongly. She's looking to make number six in Paris. Looking smooth in the backstroke leg, but Hardy really going out fast in the first 150 metres now. She uh, is a great short course swimmer. Look at the turns. It's well past the flags. She's doing a good job at just 19 years of age, but breaststrokes where she may get caught up just a little bit. So Hardy in that gold cap of Australia. Cusinato now moving a little bit quicker in the second half of this backstroke leg. And uh, they've opened up. A big gap over the field. This is the first seeded heat. No Pickram, as we can see. She doesn't enjoy swimming this longer IM event, Sydney Pickram, even though she is quite adept at the 200 and 400 meter IM distance. So the finals position is definitely on the line. They will want to be third, top three in this heat. Should move through fourth. Would be a little bit uh, in a danger position. Uh, fourth at the moment, that's Kabori from Japan. But uh, the breaststroke leg is certainly going to sort them out. This is still uh, Hardy. Those two Australians up there in uh, lanes one and two. Hardy, one day older than her teammate there, Emily Muir, who's uh, back there in about sixth place at the moment. It's uh, Hardy who's just edged in front there of uh, Cusinato, swimming out of lane number five. And uh, Jakobus, it is the Hungarian in lane number three. So uh, six laps to go. And uh, this is a strong performance by Kayla Hardy. Yeah, she's certainly not going away in this breaststroke split. Cusinato, she will be able to see her out there, especially on the turns and on uh, the short course pull. You're a little bit more aware of what's going on around you in these longer races. So that was a good pull out from Cusinato in that black cap. Hardy there at the top of screen. Jakobos from Hungary not too far away as well. But Kayla Hardy on her, making her international debut. She's having the race of her life so far in Heat 3. They split at 328. 328. So they're going to challenge that 430 this morning, I would think. And we're into the freestyle leg now with Cusinato. She made the Olympic final. She finished eighth there. She was sixth at Abu Dhabi 12 months ago in the World Short Course Championships then. And she's uh, just edged her way in front. 
of Hardy, also Jakobus. Now Jakobus uh, taking over second and down there, also in lane number seven, you've got Kabori of Japan. So four of them right across the pool there. Of course, top eight going through to the final. Yeah, Hardy's falling into a hole now. She really put it on a line early. And look at the lead change. Jakobos led with 50 to go. Now Kabori has opened up a point one of a second lead. So Jakobos fighting back. Cusinato falling back to third as well. So uh, exciting racing here in Heat 3. Down towards the finish. It's going to be the swimmer from Japan, Kabori Waka, 22-year-old. Wins an exciting finish, point one over Jakobos. Cusinato and Hardy falling back on that freestyle split. Times will be important. They'll be in danger of missing the final. The third and fourth place getters there, but Waka Kabori, she should safely move through now. Yes, that uh, race did turn around over the last uh, even 50 metres, really. Uh, it was a nicely timed swim here by Waka Kabori. Kusunato had taken over the lead. Jakobus was there as well while Hardy. She found the strain too much over the last um, 75 metres or so. Heat three going the way of Kabori. Jakobus and Kusunato. Hardy in fourth place. So 431.19 for the winner, 431.36 for second. Last of the heats coming up now. And we've got uh, Sablucha, the Canadian, is the defending champion in four. Flickinger is in lane three and Wood in five. So away we go. This is uh, the fourth. The third and final heat, or the fourth and final heat, I should say, of the 400 metres individual medley. Du Hamel in lane number one, Suzuki in two. Haley Flickender, she's in lane number three here. She's been busy at the World Championships. She uh, was the bronze medalist in Tokyo, lane three. Sepluccia, the defending champion. Wood of Great Britain in five. Franceschi of Italy. And then Smith, the bronze medalist in the 400 free. She's down there in seven. Yeah, uh, pretty even first 50 metres. And Sablucha, the defending champion, she surprised the world really last year in Abu Dhabi to take that title. And this one's going to be really open tonight. There's no clear cut favourite. Flickin' at, she's been on world and Olympic podiums before in multiple events, but never at the top. So she could sense the opportunity, Ali Flickin' up. Butterfly specialist, we know she's going to be strong on the fly in the freestyle leg to close. But uh, plenty of swimming still to come before we get to that last 100 metres. That's Suzuki there of Japan. Her entry times are 4.32. And uh, she would have just seen her teammate Kabori swim really well. Suzuki's only 17 years of age. We haven't seen her at this level in the past. And uh, the Japanese IMers. Well renowned for being so skillful and uh, having a really great endurance base across all four strokes. Yu Ahashi, of course, is the Olympic champion in, in this event. She is racing in Melbourne, just not in this 400 individual medley distance. And of course, the Japanese team, they'll be primed for a, a big world championships in Fukuoka in about seven months' time. Well, Suzuki is by far the youngest. In fact, um She's, um, this is a pretty experienced field by swimming standards, but uh, Suzuki by far the youngest, as, as you mentioned, 17, but gee, she's uh, impressing at her international debut. At the moment, she's in second place. It's flicking it as they get to the halfway point here. And uh, in second place, as I mentioned, Suzuki. So we're talking about, uh, in measurement terms, about one and a half metres separating that pair. In third place, you'd probably go across there to lane number six, and that's Franceschi Wood, who's trying to stay in touch in the red cap. Well, to see that turn, they touched only half a second apart. Flickin' up, did that uh, rolling back-to-breast turn, and Suzuki almost touched, stopped, and then pushed off, and... Flickinger just opened up a body length lead, so 
the experience of Halle Blickener really starting to shine through. She leads Franceschi moving through now, the Italian. And um, a much improved breaststroker is Halle Blickener. She has been training with Bob Bowman for the last few years. She's down there based at Arizona State University. Bowman, of course, the uh, longtime coach and mentor of Michael Phelps. And he now has a stable that includes Leon Marchand, the, the Frenchman who almost broke that world record in Budapest, and, and Chase Kalish as well. So, you know, they really focus on the endurance IM event there at Arizona State. Good swim here by Franceschi. In lane number six, the Italian. And she takes a little lead. Any lead's a good lead as you switch from breaststroke into the freestyle. And, well, this uh, little lead has become almost a full body length uh, very, very quickly. So Franceschi is in front of Flickinger. In uh, third place, Smith is not too far away. She's the second of the Americans in lane number seven. Yeah, watch for the Americans to finish this one off. Franceschi put all her energy into that breaststroke. And Leah Smith is the 400 and 800 meter freestyle specialist. So she's closing Smith, licking her as well. She'll be tough to race, uh, tough to beat in any sort of race. So Franceschi has her work cut out for her. Smith in seven is flying. Smith finishing hard. Right at the top there, uh, not all that far away. It's the French winner there, Duhamel. She's uh, back in probably fourth place at the moment. In lane number three, flicking it. She's not too far back. Smith has probably taken over as they go in now. And Smith it is. Franceschi in second and flicking it third. Sepulchra was in fourth placing. So with that strong freestyle leg, Mia Smith is able to snatch this victory and make her way into the final. Yeah, she closed hard like we thought she would. She takes heat four from lane seven. That was a long course entry time there for Leah Smith. And uh, just gets a touch over Franceschi. This is the last five metres now. She was working hard with that high stroke rate. Smith in the white cap. Franceschi in the black. Down towards the finish. It was tight. Smith wanted it. She wouldn't have been able to see was going on in the middle of the pool and those placings were important so Smith ahead of Franceschi and Flickner. Yes that's the way they finish 430.93 so the margin eight one hundredths of a second separating the American and the Italian with the second American Flickner in third place. And the final looking like this with uh, Smith and Franceschi in the yellow lanes there, Kabori, Jacobus, Flickinger, Cusinato, Sabluccia, the Bahamal, Abby Wood, Kayla Hardy, first and second reserves there. Yeah, slow heats this morning, 430.9 to be fastest qualified, that's 12 seconds over the world record. Leah Smith, 12 seconds over the world record, you lane four in the final. The men's 400 IM coming up now. That world record from Seto, 354. 12 seconds over the world record in this men's event will not make the final. I guarantee you, 406 will not make the final on the men's side. Only three heats ahead of us. There's the field for the first of them. Maldives, Chinese Taipei, Latvia, USA. USA in lane number four through Jake Foster. Also Guatemala, China and Paraguay. Take your marks. And uh, in lane two, Wang from Chinese Taipei off the blocks quickly here. So we get underway with the first of three heats. As I mentioned, Jake Foster, his um, brother Carson Foster will be in the same lane, lane number four in heat two. Yeah, it's the first time we see Jack Foster race, race individually at the World Champs, the 22-year-old with a 4.13 entry time. That's a long course time. He trains with his brother at the University of Texas under the guidance of Eddie Reese, Carson Foster, being on uh, individual medley podiums in Abu Dhabi and Budapest. Now, they're only 13 months apart in age. 13 months, so Foster born 6th of September 2000. And uh, Carson born in October 2001. So, tough double for mum there. The Foster brothers, they're on the national team. 
This is Jake in the water leading. Big lead under, after the butterfly, 55-3. This thing was a Sydney 2000 Olympics baby, September 2000. Was, uh, that is the largest city here in Australia. Here in Melbourne, the second largest city. And uh, what a great venue for the FINA World Championships. And just speaking of what's happening locally for a moment, uh, the Commonwealth Games coming to Victoria in 2026. And, of course, the 2032 Olympic Games going to the Queensland capital, Brisbane, 10 years from now. So there's going to be a lot of first-class action, a lot of swimming action over the next decade in this part of the world. As we check on now... Jake Foster, and he's got a good lead, isn't he? It's a good lead of almost three seconds. In second place, that's Gordillo. And uh, in third place across there in lane number two, it'll be Wang. Yeah, really good lead there from Jake Foster. That was the weakest of his four strokes. 157 there at the split time. See a nice gliding stroke in the breaststroke. Don't they swim so efficiently? The uh, Americans in short course breaststroke, they really focus on their IM events a lot more than they do in other countries, especially in Australia. Uh, they more focus on just the individual strokes, the Australians, but the Americans, when it comes to faking short course breaststroke, it gets a little bit easier the shorter the pool goes. So in short course yards, very easy to fake short course breaststroke. Look at that pull out, he gets 10, 11 meters there. And, um, you know, the new style in breaststroke is to, to have a really narrow kick, almost like a, a dolphin kick, whereas traditionally it used to be a wide kick with those toes facing outwards, and you had to be a built specially to, to do that, that frog-style kick, but, you know, they're getting good at faking the breaststroke. Watch for the 50 breast coming up. Satchi, the Turkish guy, watch him. So Foster's lead is substantial here. Out there in lane number four, heat one. And uh, he'll, he's going to post a good time. His time that um, he's going to be right in the mix there in terms of making it through to the final. So Foster. He'll definitely make the final. I, I don't know what sort of time he's going to post, but uh, with, with two heats, it's going to be competitive. He should make it. He's uh, seven seconds over world record pace. Remember, 12 seconds over world record in the women's event was the fastest qualifier in the final. So Foster, with a big last 25 metres here, he's got the heat win. That's not in any doubt, but uh, the time will be important. Interesting to see the, the Foster brothers in, um, well, adjoining lanes, wouldn't it? The final, you never know, it could happen. As we'll check on this time by Jake Foster, and it's a 4.02.66, 4.02.66. So he's staked his claim, Wang second, and Gordillo. Of uh, Guatemala finishing in third placing, again by the swimmer from Paraguay, Matthias. Yeah, he eased up at the end there as well, those last few strokes, Jake Foster, so he knew what he wanted to do this morning. 402, he wouldn't have raced this event in short course meters before in his career. And looking into the next couple of heats, there's uh, seven swimmers with times faster than that 402. Of course, you've got to execute your best swim in the heat to make the final. So uh, 402 will be the time that the 16 swimmers still to come. They would have seen that. They know they need to beat 402 if they want to be in the final. I wouldn't think eight of them will beat it, but uh, that becomes the benchmark. 40264, Jake Foster, 22 year old American. Dominant performance. Strong across all four strokes. Foster 402.64 by seven seconds over Wang and Gordillo 410.97. Heat two with Carson Foster in four. Rossetti of Italy. 
is in five. So in lane number one, it's Bursa of the Czech Republic, and then Wang of China in two, a garter of Japan in lane three. As I mentioned, Carson Foster in lane number four, the silver medalist from the World Championships in Budapest, the silver medalist in the 200 IM here, Rossetti, who also made the Tokyo Olympic final. He is in five. And then you've got Masaius of Greece, Jansen of the Netherlands, and Robilar of New Zealand. Yeah, strong field here in heat two. Foster, as you mentioned, already a medalist here, and he had the second fastest split last night in that record world record breaking four by two free relay 140.4 so he will fly on that last 100 meters of freestyle last year in Abu Dhabi 357.9 he went to finish second behind Diaceto Seto coming up in the next one he's the world record holder in this Diaceto and uh, world champion in the 200 breaststroke from last night so it's going to be a good battle if they can all move through the heat safely and meet up tonight so Foster would have been buoyed by the strong performance from his brother in the previous heat brothers taking out two heats in a row at the world level has that ever happened before Mike look I'd uh, have to check on that one Bobby but it does sound unusual it's probably happened with the women you know with um, the Cambridge sisters is every chance that had happened Kate and Bronte maybe you can check on that while I look at what's happening here. Foster in four. Going nicely through the backstroke here in second place. It's Ogata. Uh, the margin there just under two seconds, so it's substantial already. And Jensen, it is uh, in lane number seven, who is best of the rest down there. He's um, just in front of uh, swimmers there in two and six and seven. Yeah, 153.9. Out strongly. He's getting a little bit more familiar with short course meters racing his foster. Also trains alongside his brother at the University of Texas. They are so used to racing short course yards, but even though the pool's only three meters difference, it can really throw you out on those turns and breathing patterns and streamlines, especially in the butterfly and the breaststroke strokes where you're taking half the amount of strokes as you do in free and back. So Foster there, three and a half seconds over. World record pace is moving quick this morning. Swimming strongly for second. That's Ogata So, the 19-year-old. He's got an entry time of 4.01, the Japanese swimmer. And uh, yeah, looking good there in second position now. It's a fair gap all the way back to third. It's a good couple of meters. Rossetti, the Italian. You've got Vazeos, Jansen as well. So. Race for thirds, going to heat up, and again, you know, Foster out in front in his brother's time of 402 should really hold up as well. Into the freestyle, and uh, Carson Foster, as we mentioned, silver medalist in the 200 IM, medalist in Abu Dhabi in this event 12 months ago, the silver medalist from the Budapest Long Course World Championship. So it's quite a CV there. And uh, he is uh, well in front at the moment. It's a garter in second place as they go through the 350. Two laps remaining. And uh, in third there, Rossetti, who's improved his position throughout the race. He was well back early, but the top three clearly out in front now. And uh, fourth is being held by Jansen down there in lane number seven. As uh, Foster turns for the last time, and he's comfortably out in front of Agata. Rossetti, as I mentioned, continues to close the gap. So the times are all important as to who will go through to the final. And you'd reckon the top three here probably will. 4.01.34 for Foster. Agata in second. And Rossetti, with a time of 4.04.32, should be assured as well. Foster and Foster, they take out the first two heats. They're the fastest two qualifiers so far. This men's point at IM, he really switched up at the end there, did Carson Foster. Cruise that last 50 metres. He set it up well through the fly, the back and the breaststroke. And uh, just swam as efficiently as he could through that last 100 metres of freestyle. As we mentioned, silver medalist last year. 
He'll be looking to go one better, but uh, still one more heat to come. 4.01.34 for Carson Foster. So that's about, uh, in fact, it's exactly 1.3 seconds quicker than his younger brother, Jake, in the previous heat. The last of the heats here. Looks like um, Santos not starting. The Brazilian, lane two. Not Nicholas. Not Nicholas. He's not starting either. Never intended to. So away we go here with uh, the world record holder, Zeto, the winner of the 200 breast last night. He's the defending champion in four alongside him, Brendan Smith, who was the silver medalist in Birmingham and the bronze medalist in Tokyo. He's in five. Yeah, this is a, a strong field now. It's only seven in the water, but five of them are really well credentialed in this event across various meets over the past 18 months. So there's two Australians there, a little bit behind there, but we know that Schlicht and Smith, they're really going to fight strong for the whole race here. They'll be desperate to make the final in front of their home crowd. And out in front early now, it's Sates, the winner of the 200 IM. Finley Knox, medalist in the 200 and 100 IM events. And Seto, the world record holder. So those three, very well credentialed, doing well is Richard Nagy as well from Slovakia there in eight. So five or six really strong swimmers in the water. Their time to beat third at the moment is 403.2 and fourth is a 404 from Rossetti. He could be in danger, Rossetti, as we watch Seto push the pace on this backstroke split. Seto it is, uh, very happy with his gold medal last night and he was pointing to this, his favourite event, the world record holder. He set the world record in Las Vegas in 2019 at 3.54.81. Dea Seto, the 28-year-old star from Japan. And he uh, continues to lead here in second place. In lane number six, it'll be the South African youngster, Sates. And then Smith of Australia in lane number five. Seto, though, with a handy lead. The lead now is, um, what, about two body lengths? It's tight for third. As I mentioned, uh, Smith and also Schlitt, the second of the Australians. Yeah, look at these pullouts from Seto. He's the shortest swimmer in the field. Gets well over 10 metres on that back to breast turn. You see how many strokes he does on this first lap. That's for five strokes only on the first lap of breaststroke. Look at these pullouts. So powerful, so skillful is Seto. That's about 12 metres. We saw him do exactly this on the 200 breaststroke last night to almost break the world record. And uh, this is why he's the world record holder in this event. He's only going to take 20 strokes of breaststroke in this 400 individual medley. Talk about faking it. <laughs> he's uh, out there in front. Sates in second, but he's been challenged for second there by David Schlick, the uh, Australian there in lane number three. This is a, a good performance by him. The second of the Australian Smith is, is has dropped back into fourth placing. So they are the lead quartet. And by some margin, it's Japan's Daisetto as he is about to turn into the freestyle now. And he leads it by, let's have a look at the margin, 3.3. Sakes it is still second, then Schlick for Smith. Yeah, race on for second and third here again. Those times important. Seto's going to move through safely. Sates, he's just had a look there, just double breeze into that turn, has a look at where Schlick is. Schlick. Probably the uh, less credentialed of the Australians. Had a great breaststroke leg and Brendan Smith there in lane five. You know he can really storm home in that last 50 metres when it gets close. So Seto clearly out in front. That fastest time so far this morning is a 4.01. But the remaining three swimmers, they'll need to be under 4.04 if they want to make the final. Sates currently in second place. Schlick was there as well, but uh, storming home is Smith. It's interesting for second and third. No doubt about our winner, though. Seto. Seto. The crowd getting behind Smith. Looks like he's going to come from fourth to second. All oh, his third. Very, very tight. That was an almighty last effort, but what a well-controlled race it was by Dea Seto. And he wins in 4.0035. He can 
go a lot quicker than that. His world record is uh, over five seconds quicker. So we can expect some more speed come finals time. Yeah, good race there from Seto. He uh, takes out that one, four minutes point three. He's got plenty left in the tank. He'll know he'll have a huge challenge tonight with Carson Foster. And uh, this is the finish. Seto will out in front. Smith stormed home. Some oohs and ahs from the crowd. He wasn't able to touch out Sates. And he was disqualified. Brendan Smith, so it was a huge finish to Noah Bale. Smith disqualified. Seto, Sates and Schlick, one, two and three. Great racing there. And well done, Dea Seto. Seto quickest through to the final from Carson Foster, Sates, Jake Foster. And then Schlick, Elgata, Rosetti and Nagi. So the Fosters, uh, they will be racing in adjoining lanes, won't they? Lanes four and three. Next to each other. Yep. And with that disqualification of Smith, wow, that's big news. 4.06 makes the final. I apologise. I said 12 seconds over the world record wouldn't make it. I apologise. Nagi there, 4.06, qualifies eight. How wrong I am. Only once, Bobby. Only once. The women's 100 metres butterfly. We've got four heats ahead of us now. And we'll work out the top 16 going through to the semi-final phase. Lara and Borg, the Dominican Republic and Samoa in the middle lanes. Swimmer from Uganda in lane one, Nalawasa Thorpe is in lane number two. Then you've got uh, Diop of Senegal, Lara, Dominican Republic, the Samoan Borg, Ripkova of Slovakia, and uh, Villa Mantia of Honduras. Yeah, field of, of seven here in this first hit of the women's 100 fly. The uh, swimmer in for Lara's got an entry time of one minute point six. So there's only four heats this morning, so we'll go straight into the seeded heats to come. But that was a really good turn there from lane six. That's Ripkova. He's got a slight lead at the moment. Ripkova, Borg, and Lara. And uh, I thought in lane two is moving through in sixth position this morning. Lane six it is. Ripkova, the swimmer from Slovakia. 20 years of age, and she is taking it out. Second place, Lara, the Dominican Republic, and uh, third home was Borg of Samoa. Yeah, two swimmers under the minute there this morning. Zora Ripova, the 20 year old, takes out the first. Two and a half seconds under her entry time, and at the finish there. Just puts her head down on that last stroke and uh, gets on the wall with a full stroke. Results of heat one. There's two of them under the minute, in fact, Recover and Lara. And already we have the first of the seeded heats here with uh, the world junior record holder, Claire Kurtzman, in lane number four, and uh, Lana Puda who was a finalist at the Worlds in Budapest. She's the swimmer in lane five. Australia with Brittany Castelluso in two. There's Kirsten. in lane four, bronze medalist in this event at Abu Dhabi and uh, hasn't she become an international star since then? She's going nicely in the first lap and also down there in lane number six, it's making the ward. Yeah, she's been in everything, Curzon, the 18-year-old, really uh, prevalent in the short course racing in Abu Dhabi and here in Melbourne, strong in Budapest as well in the long course pool. It's a ward though, 
the Ducks from a really strong underwater, both of them, Curzon and DeWard. There's DeWard in that black cap. He stays under longer than everybody else. Kuda there in the bottom of the yellow lanes, starting to move through the 16-year-old. But look at this turn from DeWard. We'll see if she's got the lung capacity to stay under. She's trying, but she's not getting that advantage anymore. 13 metres underwater as they come up for the finish. And they're coming through Curzon, finishing hard in four. DeWard is still there. It's on the touch. It ends up being Kohler on the other side of DeWard. Kohler and then DeWard. And then third home would have been Kuda. Fourth home was Curzon. Well, Kohler, the German in lane number seven. Look, she can't quite believe it either. She flew home over the last 10 metres. Yeah, there she is in seven. Nothing separated them off the start. They've got to get those feet in together just to have a clean entry into the water and help with that streamline. This is the finish. She's ahead behind DeWard, but those strokes got short for DeWard, and Kohler just got on a full touch, and not only do you need to touch the touch, but you've got to set it off. You've got to swim through the wall, and she does that better than Micah DeWard. Not much in it at the finish. I'm not sure if she can't believe the win all the time. Body language indicating Angelina Kohler couldn't quite believe her luck. 56-56. Takes more than luck, of course, but she couldn't believe the win. Heat three. Tori Husk is there in lane number five. The winner of the 50 fly with Maggie McNeil, of course. Louise Hansen in lane number four, Husk in five, and they're away in heat number three. Yeah, we see some more great underwater exponents here. That's Husk out quick through the 25. She loves the front end, any race that she's in so fast off the blocks. Good underwater, but as is Hansen there in the blue cap, the Swedish swimmer, she uh, has been off the podium this week. Uh, got a medal last night in the 100 IM, but missed in her 100 backstroke underball record pace. Tori Husk out quick. That world mark stands at 54.5 from Kelsey Dahlia. I don't think she's going to be as aggressive through the second 50 metres here. But just getting her stroke counts right and her kick counts, they would be counting their dolphin kicks under the water to know exactly where they are. And Husk and Hansen are in the lead. Hansen in the black cap, and in the white cap, it's Husk who has a little peek to a left, and it's Hansen who finishes the better. Hansen from Husk and Perkins. One, two, three in heat number three here. Yes, they took it out very hard. In fact, at the 50, they were a third of a second under world record pace, but that world record quickly slipped away. It ended up being a winning time of 55.74. Uh, that was more than a second outside Dahlia's time. Yeah, we know Husk has got a lot of speed, but to use it in the heats when top 16 move through, very unusual. It's it's uh, it's not an easy way to swim, go out fast and fade or, or even switch off, but there's definitely easier ways to swim a 100 butterfly. So Husk, in my opinion, not managing her energy well there. She, she will move through, of course. Hansen gets the heat win ahead of Husk and Perkins. Move on to the final heat here. A couple of uh, scratching. Both the Chinese swimmers, Wang and Zhang Yufei, are out. So that means the defending champion here, Maggie McNeil, has clear water on either side of her. No swimmers in three and five. McNeil, the Olympic champion, the defending champion. Of course, she took gold in the 50 fly with Husk. Yeah, she's back in the water, McNeil. World record in the 50 backstroke. Uh, that was last night ahead of Claire Curzon. So we'll see both those sprint backstrokers here in the 100 fly. And uh, McNeil, she didn't race individual events in Budapest this year. She was just on relay duty for Canada. She. Uh, Changed colleges in the US to follow her, Rick, her coach Rick Bishop um, and move away from her previous program. So looking really strong. She knows how to manage herself through the heat, says McNeil. She'll do just enough to take this one. 
Yes, McNeil it is. She has a little peek to the left. No one out there, no one to the right. So she goes straight ahead and touches the wall, stopping the clock here in 56.33. Second home was uh, her teammate there in lane seven, Savard. Diamante in uh, lane six was third for Brazil. Yeah, look at that. Not, not uh, puffing too hard at all. She really swam within herself. 54-7 she went last year to take the world title. It's only uh, 0.19 outside the world record of Kelsey Dahlia. So she may have that in mind come finals time, Maggie McNeil. She's the only individual world record breaker of these championships so far. 56-53 her winning time. By a third of a second over Savard in the final heat. Semi-final time in this event coming up this evening with Louise Hansen recording the fastest in the heats. Husk and Perkins, McNeil. She's uh, got uh, a lot of speed still in her back pocket there. Now we will have a swim off because uh, we've got 57.85 there for Brittany Castellusa of Australia. An identical time there for Laura Lardman of Finland. So for the 16th and final spot in the semi-finals, Australia and Finland, that'll come up later. We haven't had a swim off for a couple of days. We no. had a re-swim instead. Yeah. That was, um, that was more fun. That was much more fun last night. <laughs> I don't know if Isaac Cooper would agree with that. The men's 100 metres butterfly. Eight hits here. Swimmers in the first of eight heats here in the men's 100 metres butterfly. It's uh, Kinley Linda of Bhutan in lane number three, and Zaya Alexenko of the Northern Mariana Islands in lane number four, and in lane number five, it's uh, Enkdenmir Batbaya of Mongolia. And uh, the swimmer in five here, Batbaya, is trying to stay there with a the man in the blue cap, and that's Alexenko. Yeah, there he is underwater. We know how important it is in short course racing and especially in the butterfly and backstroke events. That short course butterfly world record from Caleb Dressel, 47.7. It's almost a full two seconds quicker than the long course world record. So, um, you know, it it's roughly translates to about one second quicker per 50 meters in that conversion from short to long course. So now touching it forward, it's gonna be Alex Senko, 54.55 for the 16 year old. No entry times for all three of the swimmers, so he looks really pleased with that performance. The young star takes out the first heat and 54-5, um, it's a strong swim. Might hold up for a, a couple of heats here. 54-55, the 16 year old, Rosario Alexenko. Representing the Northern Mariana Islands. One of about 170 countries here. The 16th FINA World Championships at the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre. Alexenko, a heat winner. Alexenko from Batbaya and Linda. Heat one. Gibraltar and Albania have swimmers here in the middle lanes. Heat two, Carol and Prisca. And it's uh, Inglius Wallace of Palau up there in lane number one. Delimi of Swaziland, up of the United Arab Emirates. Carol, Gibraltar, Prisca, Albania, Ashur of Libya. And then you've got. Um, the swimmer from Guinea and uh, finally the swimmer from Guam, that's Vialio and Hendricks. Down towards the halfway mark, it's lanes three and five at the moment, that's Sup and Carroll. Yeah, they uh, they open the field up through the first 50 metres. 57-1 is the entry time for Aiden Carroll. They're well on pace to beat that. 
this morning, so it might be those long course entry times that we keep talking about. In three there, that's Sapp, that's just getting caught up there on that last stroke into the turn. And down there in lane number six, James Hendricks with Guam. He's trying to hold on there, but uh, the big finish coming from Sapp. He gets it from Carroll and Hendricks, who was um, not part of that duel in the middle lanes there throughout, but uh, he got off to a great start and he almost held out for the win. Yeah, there's Salim Sapp from the United Arab Emirates, 55.95. Taking out heat two, he's been busy at these championships, racing in a lot of the shorter distance races in Melbourne. And uh, diving in there off the blocks, didn't go too deep off the start, but still working those all important underwater kicks. As you mentioned, Hendricks there closest to screen, almost stole it from lane eight, tightened up at the finish. It's a painful event, the 100 fly, especially when you put your head down those last few strokes. This is it, they breathe at the beginning of the red zone. They put it down those last two or three strokes. Wow, look at that touch. Simultaneously stroking into the wall, but touching first, setting the touch pad off, was sapped. First four under the minute there, in fact, uh, under 58 seconds. Now, heat three, Senegal and Paraguay with Aimable and Hocken in those middle lanes. Hey, Swimmers from around the world here once again, El Salvador, Andorra, Honduras. We've also got Senegal, Paraguay, the Dominican Republic, Tanzania and Tonga. And uh, not too much between them as uh, they complete the first 25 in lane number four, Stephen Amable, who's got an entry time of 53.64. He probably led at that stage, but gee, up there in lane number two, Lamiro. Yeah, real mixed bag here in heat three. We see Hocken there in the middle as well, an experienced racer at this level. He's falling a bit behind now, Amable in lane four starting to power away through that third 25 meters and this is the important turn the last turns worth double that's when everyone wants to come up you've got to work those underwater kicks Hocken did that but it looks like in four Stephen aimable he will take out the third heat fastest time of the morning 53.08 the swimmer from Senegal Wow, look at that hair. Looks like yours, Mike. <laughs> Mine's naturally white. Yeah, no, it was good racing, wasn't it? Um, right across the pool there, and it was only the last 25 metres or so that this fellow was uh, able to assert real authority. And even then, he was home by less than a second. Um, just checking on this result. Yeah, it was only about a third of a second, so... Very competitive, heat number three here. Aimable 53.08, 53.36 for Vasquez, and 53.87 for Hocken. There's the start list for the fourth heat. Now, Finlay Knox is listed to start, but he's not down there. The bronze medalist from the 300 IM, he's had a busy program, so he's a scratching. Yeah, he just raced in the previous event, the men's 400 IM. And quickly off the blocks here, it's uh, Wong Chirong of Thailand in lane number three. Also there in two, it's Yang of Korea off to a great start. We'll watch for the Ugandan swimmer down there, Sengosi in eight, who's away beautifully. Yeah, Yang was good in the 50 freestyle yesterday. So we know he's got speed to burn up there in lane number two. Touching first at the halfway mark, though, that's going to be Nicholas Mata from Peru. Working those underwater kicks strongly. There's about four across the pool. Yang now also looking good at the 75-metre mark. Not much separates them. Nicholas Mata's still up there, but the swimmers in one and eight are right there competing for the heat win. It's going to be very tight up there in lane number two, Yang. Yang will probably get there. He does. 
uh, Nicholas Mata and uh, Sengosi. Second and third respectively. Winning time 51.36, 51.77 for second. Yeah, Yang, Jaehoon. If you want three, it's going to require a little bit more than that to make the semi finals in this event. A real uh, hotly contested men's 100 fly this morning here in Melbourne. Yang there on the left of the screen. Head down those last three strokes. It's really tough to do when you're uh, dying for some oxygen. He takes heat four. Fastest time of the morning, Yang, Nicholas Mata, and Sengozi all under 52 seconds. And Knox withdrawing. Now, this is still an unseeded heat, but we've got the American Michael Andrew in lane number four. He was fourth at the Budapest World Championships. That's going to set the cat among the pigeons in this fifth heat. Expected to dominate this. You've got Molly Young's uh, off the blocks quickly there in lane two. Mustn alongside him, trying to go with Andrew. He's in lane number four. Yeah, it was a quick start from the starter. Andrew was slow off the blocks. He powers through the first 25 metres, but as we've spoken about previously, the United States, they select their short course world championship team based off long course results this year. So Andrew racing this event, he's entered on a long course time. But we know he's not so strong in the short course pool. He doesn't have the underwater work that a lot of other swimmers do have. He's there in the middle of the pool. He's touching in about fifth position with 25 to go. He's not going to win this heat first to surface. Andrew's going backwards, swimming well. He's uh, up there, Molianas, the Spanish swimmer, flying home in three is Mussen. It's going to be Mussen on the touch. 50.64. He gets there at the end. That was a really strong finish from the swimmer from Kazakhstan. Again, they smashed their entry times this morning. So everybody moving quick here, still after five days of heats. Wilson and Molyanis and Andrew falling back to seven. And that was a surprise. As I mentioned, Andrew only just missed out on the medals. He was fourth at the Budapest World Championships. And uh, well, I suggested he was expected to dominate this race and it was far from that. Swimming throws up surprises. Michael Andrew back in seventh. There's the result. Wilson with that big finish, 50.64 and 50.67. Molly Yanis, who was off the blocks quickly and always in contention. Here's heat number six. Now, Zabo is a non-starter here, so take mm. out lane number three. He was the bronze medalist in the 50. He's got the 50 free final tonight. Concentrating on that. Ponty, bronze medalist at the Tokyo Olympics in lane number four. Slight delay here. Yeah, first of the seeded heats here. Ramadan there from Egypt. Fourth place in Abu Dhabi last year. He's a very good underwater kicker. Training with Sergio Lopez in the United States. So the music's back on. The swimmers have been told to relax, take a seat. They've got to figure something out and, uh, and not get cold. That's the, the important thing with some of these slight delays in Melbourne is to um, not only mentally stay focused, but physically just stay warm, stay loose. They might... Uh, Another 30 seconds or so, you'll see these guys start to put some clothes on and um, put a towel around them. They would have already splashed themselves with a little bit of pool water, as a lot of swimmers like to do before the start, and that might just be getting a little bit cool on their skin. Martinez, and, uh, the Mexican, we saw getting his jacket on out there in lane number one. So too, it looks like in uh, lane seven, Lydianik. So we do have... Like, looks like it's an issue with the touch pads. That's where they're concentrating at the moment. Yeah, yes, there they are at the turn end of lane four. Going to uh, 
probably try and quickly change the touch pad. They uh, meager timing. We have touch pads on both ends of the pool now, so we do get 25 meter splits in every single race, which we haven't had at the World Championship level before, the short course World Championship level. So they they take that lane four turn end touch pad out. They put a new one in. They'll try and get this done as quickly as they can. I would have tried a hammer, but they know a little bit more about it than I do, and they've replaced this touch pad. So a slight delay here. First of the seeded heats, the men's 100 metres butterfly. And but now all the swimmers back there have got their jackets on, just waiting. Yeah, hot field here. We've got Cassis in the next one. Not this one. Shane Cassis. Karun, the world junior record holder. Temple revolts as the defending world champ. Chad Leclo after that. Former world record holder. And Marius Kush. Jacob Majerski. And the big finalist. So, very important, these next three heats. The big names have got to move through. There's a lot of challenges there that will be pushing for a semi-final position, a final spot maybe even a medal. Okay, everything is in readiness now for this heat six. As we mentioned, no Zabo, lane three, concentrating on the freestyle tonight. Take your marks. Ponty, not a great start for the Ponty in lane number four. The Swiss in the red cap there. Great start down there in lane number seven, though. Million year from Croatia. Yeah, Ponte is a much improved short course swimmer. Got a silver medal in the 50 fly, and uh, normally we've seen him more focus on the 100 and 200 meter distances. So speed to burn. He's going to use that speed this morning. 23-1 at the split. He uh, is working hard underwater as is Ramadan there next to him in those yellow lanes. Ponte likes to breathe every stroke. That red cap of Switzerland really stands out. Just gets under that last turn nicely. He'll be able to see the field. He'll know he just wants to win this heat as comfortable as possible this morning. He's out by three quarters of a length now. Ramadan just lost a bit of ground off that uh, wall with the last turn. Ponty taking it out. Ramadan second. And Sakamoto, who led early in lane number two, he finished in third place in 48.81 was the winning time for Noel Ponty in Switzerland. Very impressive swim there from Noah Ponty. He breathed every stroke, even first stroke off the dive. I'm not sure if that's his usual style, but you can see when he touched the wall, he wasn't really physically tired because he got plenty of oxygen in, working hard underwater, but... Uh, had that really low breath, low head breath position, so he's able to put that breath into his stroke without it interrupting his rhythm there. 48.8, anything under 50 is strong, anything under 49 is truly world class. Yes, Ramadan in second, Sakamoto in third. Two seeded heats remaining. There's the start list for heat seven, the second last, but uh, Cassis is not starting here, so take out lane one. That's a surprise. It's only Cassis' only race this morning. So no Americans will make the semi-final. So we've got our defending champion here. This is Revolta of Italy in lane number four. Alongside him, it's uh, the Dutch swimmer Costagne. They're flanked there by Temple and Tanaka. Yeah, this one will be interesting. There's uh, Revolto, as you mentioned. He's got that side breath butterfly, which is... Uh, oh! He looks to have gone over 15 metres off that first turn. Matteo Revolta to the naked eye. I'd say he went over. There he is underwater, really moving that head, milking the underwater. Goes very close again. He's in the lead. He breathes to the side, breathes every stroke, like we saw from Ponte. Let's have a look at the last turn. Temple swimming well and Karun in those above lanes at the top of screen. Still underwater, Revolta. He should hang on to take out this heat. Karun's flying home, the Canadian. Revolta wins it, 49-43. I'm sure they'll take a look at that first wall. 
from the Italian swimmer. Not much emotion showed there. Of course, the swimmers are only allowed 15 metres underwater off the dive and all of the turns. The swimmers, they, they do count their kicks off the start. They've got to count their kicks. A good underwater kicker will count their kicks and will never go over 15 metres. They really milked it. I think this is, this is the first turn underwater. They are not ruling this official at the moment. We'll see if we can get that breakout stroke as he rises. Uh, I think this was the third turn. So a little bit hard to tell. I think he was okay on the third no, there, turn. Oh, there, that's the, the first, first turn. Yeah, that was the first turn. Yeah. You can see you can see on that breakout stroke, it went over. Oh. Having said that... They're making me look silly. All clear. All clear. Revolta it is, who claims the win, and he's been awarded the win here. 49-43. They literally just replayed it, and he went over 15 metres. Like, did we all just not see that? The last of the heats now. Chad Leclerc in lane number four. Push from Germany in lane five. Out. Should have been in lane two. Leclerc in lane number three. Push and Boucher in five and six down there. And uh, Chad Leclerc. What an emotional win it was in the 200 a couple of nights ago. Fourth in the Commonwealth Games and silver in this event in Abu Dhabi last year. Yeah, it was a, a delayed start there. They've been really inconsistent with some of the officiating here at these championships. Leclerc was behind off the first 25. We know he's going to move through the 200 metre champion. Push there in the black cap of Germany at the back end of his career now. We'll see if Push can hold off on this challenge, but watch Leclerc on this last wall. He likes to look around. He'll know exactly where he is. Well, he's at the moment in front, and he has a peek to his right. This is going to be tight. Push and Leclerc. Leclerc just touching out Push and Butcher in third, followed by Majewski. In fact, Majewski did start. The problem was... So the start list uh, didn't have a number two in there, which is why I thought he was out. There was no one in lane two, but yeah, Ryuski was there. Yeah, there's Leclerc, great racer. We knew he was going to time the finish. This is it. Cushion the black cap, Leclerc in the white, timing on the wall, hit together, only a hundredth of a second, but Leclerc gets the touch. We see it with Leclerc and Chalmers and McKeon. When it's close, somehow always claim the, the victory. I wouldn't say the goal. It's going to be a good race come tomorrow night's final. The Cloak Push and Boucher should all move safely through. So, this is uh, the lineup for the semi finals with uh, Ponty, excellent this morning, Revolta, Ramadan. Cloak, of course, is there. And no swim off required for the top 16 here. Musen 50.64, Zaitsev position number 14. And then 50.67 for uh, Mono Yalas. Revolta's in there after that uh, review. We saw in the men's 50 back they reviewed Engel, I think it was, in one of the earlier heats who made the semis. Looked like he went well over 15. And that went past, but in the semi-finals they did disqualify him. So the officials will mark that one down. They'll know to really keep one eye on Revolta. He, and he's the defending champ. He's, he's got to get it right tonight. He can't make that same mistake because surely the officials won't miss it. Well, I can quickly run down the pool deck if you need. No, no, I'm, I'm just making the point as we're about to move along to the women's 50 metres breaststroke. Um, it's all very well him not being able to get away with the final, but you would think he shouldn't get to the final in the first place if there's an issue. Now, the first of seven heats here. Standing down, standing down, standing down. Yeah, the starter just asking them to stand down now. The swimmers in four and five, not quite hearing that instruction.
So away they go. This is Wulaketa Palau in lane number three, Yonge of Sierra Leone in lane number four, and Toure of Mali in lane five. No entry times here for these three girls in the white cap. It is uh, the 15 year old Wulaketa Palau who leads it by some margin of full body length as they turn at the halfway point, Yonge of uh, Sierra Leone there in second place in lane number four and uh, the swimmer from Mali is about a length further back that is Tura in lane number five so 50 meters of breaststroke and they enter the last five or at least our leader does here Ruliket and uh, she reports a time here of 41.65 winning heat number one in second place Yonge a time 46.98 and 48.96 for Tour. Yes, taking out the first heat there is Rulikert off the blocks nicely. Only three of them in the first heat. We've got seven heats in total, so a lot of competition in this women's 50 breaststroke. No entry times for Heat 1. But uh, Rulikit takes out the first. 41-65 ahead of Yongai and Toure. First, second and third. Heat 2. The Northern Mariana Islands in Mali. In those middle lanes. So it's uh, the Tolnes, Northern Mariana Islands, McWenda in lane number five there. And a big start there for Aurora. She's the swimmer from India in the blue cap in lane number one. They, they're going to be struggling to catch her. Yeah, she's the only one, the only swimmer here in heat two without an entry time. So looking to post something fast. That's Aurora in one. And uh, Balatones in lane four. We've seen her race really well here in Melbourne in a, a variety of events, but it will be Aurora, 32.91. Really good swimmer. It's uh, time for the swimmer from India, 25-year-old Shahat Aurora, taking out heat two by a nice little margin over Maria Balatones. It's 32.91 for the winner there. 34.58 for second in the first of seven heats here, the women's 50 metres breaststroke. Yeah, really high stroke rate there, just bouncing on top of the water. In the sprint breaststroke, the, the body position is the most important thing to stay as, as floating and high in the water as you can. You don't want to be uh, pulling, uh, being too, drag, uh, too much drag in this event through the two laps. And uh, Aurora Balatones and Ria Sav the top three swimmers there in heat two. Moving on to heat number three here. Connolly and Namatibi, the Cook Islands and Uganda in the middle lanes. So Mary Connolly of the Cook Islands has the quickest of the entry times here at 32.77, but uh, Namatibi of Uganda is our early leader and now it is uh, Connolly who goes up to challenge, and she's going to lead at the halfway mark. So it's Connolly in front, Namatubi in second place, and third it's uh, Russell at this, this stage. As they come down now with less than 10 to swim and through in lane number four, it is Mary Connolly who finishes hard and uh, she takes it out and stops the clock in 31.68. It's Namatubi in second place and Russell from the Bahamas finishing in third. Nicely put together race that by Mary Connolly. Away well. And once she got into a rhythm about halfway down this first lap, she was able to gradually get in front by the halfway point and then make the most of that opportunity with a good turn and come home. So Connolly, the winner of heat number three in 31.68.
32-47 and 32-54 second and third. The last of the unseeded heats here. Any laser of the United States in lane number three. She's been quiet here, the experienced American sprinter. So Laser in three, and then Sim of Singapore and Nickel of Canada in four and five. And away well, it's Vox of Slovenia in lane two. Yeah, not much is going to separate them now. The times start to get a little bit quicker. The swimmer's in the middle of the pool with entry times of 30 seconds. And might be Sim from Singapore there in that black cap. Middle of the pool. Timing on the wall is going to be important. Vox coming through in lane two. Vox moving the fastest over those last couple of strokes. She will just get there by four one hundredths of a second. 30.39 for Tara Bob from Slovenia. She takes the last of the unseeded heats. Rachel Nickel not too far away as well. And Sim only 0.1 of a second back there in third position. So not much separated them off the dive. Really clean entry for all of the women there diving in. And as we mentioned, wow, big duck dive on the turn there for Vok. She took a little peek over to her left just to see where everyone was. She swims aggressively in this sprint breaststroke event. But uh, it's rewarded. She takes the heat and uh, it's a time about 0.75 of a second faster than her entry. This result to be confirmed as um, the officials check the vision. Well, remember in Abu Dhabi last year, the first FINA competition where they could use underwater video footage to rule on disqualifications, just how many in that men's and women's 50 pressure. I think we had eight or nine disqualifications. They got Alia Atkinson, the world record holder, disqualified her. Sachi, the Turkish man. He was disqualified as well after being fastest qualifier. They really made a point of it. Not so much on the start, but it's in the finish where the swimmers now, they were trying to sneak a downward dolphin kick on that last stroke onto the wall. And of course, they need to have those feet facing outwards in the traditional breaststroke style. So we've got two disqualifications there, Petkova and Mon Romanchuk. Now, oh, this is uh, the first of the seeded heats. First of the seeded heats, but uh, Sophie Hansen is withdrawal. Lane five. In lane number four, it's Tang then of China and uh, Jenna Strosh, Australia. She was fifth at the Commonwealth Games down there in lane number seven. Yeah, no lane five in this one. Tang is a defending champion in the 100 metre distance. She was off the podium earlier this week in Melbourne, looking really strong through the turn there. There she's in that right cap of China. Again, high stroke rate, keeps her body up nice and high in the water as best as she can. She's looking for a sub 30 second time, and she does. 29.38. First swimmer under 30 seconds this morning. It's uh, just off her entry time, the 18 year old from China. Throws down the benchmark swim in this women's 50 breaststroke through the first five heats. And uh, you can see her really squeeze those elbows in and lunge her upper body forward as quickly and as powerfully as she can. The breaststroke, it's over before you know it. They uh, only take about seven or eight strokes on that first lap. So it's a real power-based stroke, different to freestyle and backstroke, where you're swimming with those single arms at a time. The breast and the fly is a lot more muscular. It's more powerful to pull the water with both arms together and then recover. It's power and recover, repeated as fast as you can. And uh, looks to be another disqualification here. Yes, Jenna Strosh uh, disqualified here. Tang taking it out, 25-39, 29-89 for second. The action's about to hot up here. We've got King and Pilato, Van Niekerk, all in the second last heat. Lily King of the United States.
United States. The winner of the 100, second in the 200 against the world record holder, Pilato in five in Italy. Yeah, there's Pilato. She was off her best in the 100, but she loves the 50 metre distance. She got a medal at this level as a 14 year old. Touching second there, Alain, the German who's been on a podium here in Melbourne already. Really tight racing in this heat of the 50 breaststroke. Again, that timing on the touch is important. King in the middle of the pool, not far away. And moving through is Van Niekirk. Van Niekirk, the South African. Really strong on those last few strokes under the wall. A nod of the head, she knew exactly what to do there. And uh, the teenager from South Africa upsets a couple of big names there. Off the blocks, there's King, just gets her head up. Looks towards the other end of that dive, just gets the chest up to reach for a little bit more distance. This was the turn. Pilato's really got that dolphining motion with her hips. She is the world record holder in this event. Got a little caught up on that turn. King was really smooth out of that wall, but there's Van Niekerk left of the yellow lanes. She's got a slight lead there. She's the tallest of the swimmers. They might be looking at, they're gonna look at all of these finishes, I think, for that downward dolphin kick, but the swimmers in heat six, they're all safe. All safe, yes, 29-45 for Van Niekerk. The uh, Commonwealth Games champ there, King in second, and Lent in third. And the last of the heats now, and uh, well, speaking of disqualification, through to Meliatita, disqualified in the 100. There she is in lane number four. Meliatita in lane four, Clark of Great Britain in lane number five, and Aoki of Japan in lane three, and in lane four, Meliatita is away world. She is the championship record holder and the world champion from Budapest. As she turns now, and she is in front in second place, alongside in the red cap, it's Clark, and also in the yellow cap, it's Hodges on Australia up there in lane number two, but Meliatita is going to win this and win it pretty well. One, Meliatite, two, Clark, and three, Gaspar. 29, 10, fastest time of the morning for Meliatite. Not as dominant through that start as we've seen in the 100. She was disqualified in the 100 breast final for doing multiple dolphin kicks off the dive. The swimmers only allowed one dolphin kick, one pull out off the dive and off the turns. So Meli Tite there, she just makes that adjustment. This is the finish, this will be a good view to see if anyone does it down with Dolphin Kick on the finish. Meli Tite safe. Ooh, the swimmer next to her, Imogen Clark, is safe. And uh, four of them under 30 seconds. So that's um, what, by four tenths of a second there, Meli Tite over Clark. And she's by far the quickest going through to the semi-finals. In fact, uh, it is uh, 28 hundredths of a second separating Meliatita and Tang, first and second quickest there. And Van Niekirk's going to be really prominent in the semi-finals. It took a time there of 30.33 to make the top 16, Javalis. And uh, then we've got, uh, what, 30 and 35, Bonnet misses out for France. Semi-final stage of the women's 50 metres breaststroke coming your way this evening here from the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre. Big program coming up overall this evening. Second last night of finals. Six finals and semi-finals in four events. And of course tomorrow we'll wrap it up with ten races, all finals here at the World Championships. The men's 50 metres breaststroke is next. World record standing at 24.95. Set on December the 27th, two days after Christmas last year. Now, Duma listed the start, but the swimmer from Congo not doing so.
So we're down to two here. Mirk Mata of uh, Mongolia in lane number four and the swimmer from Mali, that is Kuma in lane five. Kuma in the blue cap, our slight leader here at the halfway point. No uh, entry times recorded for these swimmers, but uh, it is Kuma who got to the halfway point in front and he's maintained that lead and looks like he's going to edge away in the closing stages as well. Sebastian Kuma taking out heat number one and uh, he wins in a time of 28.73. Big Mark in second placing with 29.85, so 12 one hundredths between that pair in the first of nine heats of the men's 50 metres breaststroke. As we have a look at that start again, not too much between them in terms of the reaction time, but uh, once they did their underwater work, it was Kuma who was able to come up in front and he was able to retain that lead and stretch it in the second half of the race. Yeah, 28.73 there for Sebastian Kuma. Both swimmers under 30 seconds. Miyagma touching second. Start this for heat number two here. Alamadi of the United Arab Emirates and Dansu of Benin. Take your marks. And uh, Al Hamadi. Kumal in lane number three. And down there in lane five away, well, it's Den uh, Dansu of Benin. Yeah, they would have seen the times from the first heat and they want to match that. and get under 30 seconds so powerful off that pull out swimming without the cap there is a dan suit and uh he looks to be about half a stroke ahead into the finish now just got a time a little long on that finish but he gets under 30 29.50 for the 39 year old martin pascal pierre dan channeling his inner nicholas santos to take heat two. You'd think at 39 you'd have a fair chance of setting the record as the oldest of the championships, but not the case. Nicholas Santos has him covered. Well, the now retired Nicholas Santos anyway. He was still swimming until about two days ago. Yeah, that's it. 42 Santos, 42 years of age. He took out the 50 fly. Dansu. First to touch the wall here in heat two, the 39-year-old, but disqualified there. Disqualified was Dan Su, so Alamad takes it in 29.96, heat two. Onto the third heat. Looks like Lawrence won't be starting from Mozambique in three. Take your man. Bon Pierre of Haiti and Rahavel of Madagascar there in four and five. And uh, probably first to show out would be Halal of Tanzania in the blue cap down there in lane number eight. Also Limtiako in lane six. And as they turn, it was Limtiako in front in the white cap. And he comes up, he's still in front, but going through in lane number four, Grand Prix of Haiti, he's taken over and he's going to win this uh, winner by about um, a head and he wins it in a time of 27.99 big difference between 27.99 and 28 in terms of well in terms of the memory bank isn't it uh, a psychological one one hundredth of a second yes up 28 there so strong swim there for the 19 year old when you go 27.99 you, you can go back to Haiti and tell everybody he went 27 in the 50 breaststroke whereas if you went 28 flat you've got to tell people you went 28 so a psychological victory indeed there is in the middle of the pool he takes the heat convincingly they're going to look at a lot of finishes here at these championships in the sprint breaststrokes we've seen a disqualification in the previous heat we saw a lot on the women's side as well and um, still five or six heats of this men's 50 breast to come. So it's uh, the use of the video technology is 
getting a workout here in Melbourne. They're going to review this one in Heat 3. And as a result, uh, we have a disqualification there. The swimmer from Brunei, Mohamed Ahmed, disqualified. We move along to the fourth heat now. Wantonar and Milconian have those yellow lanes there, full field the boat. And quickly off the block, the blocks there was uh, Robertson of Botswana in three and Wantonar of Namibia. And right down there in lane number seven, Wu of Chinese Taipei showing no signs of Wu. Yeah, powerful on that pullout. Clearly first at the 25 meter mark. We'll see what he can do across his second lap. Really short, but he's got a high stroke rate there. Just bouncing on top of the water. He's going to take this heat in a handy time as well. 26.67 for Wu from Chinese Taipei. He surprises himself. Very pleased. Almost a full two seconds under his entry time. And uh, undoubtedly, that's the fastest time through the first four heats this morning for Wu. Excellent swim there by Wu Chun Feng, the Chinese Taipei. Yeah, that was the start there. He's on the right of screen. Got off the blocks like a rocket. Powerful underwater, and they weren't able to catch him after that start. This is the finish. He timed it well. They are looking at the downward dolphin kick on the finish. That's the common error uh, that the officials are looking for uh, in these sprint breaststroke events, but we're all safe in heat four. 26.67, an impressive winning time here for Wu. Palace of Slovakia and Elisavets Ukraine in the middle lanes here in heat number five. Even start here, Hallis and Lizavets, the quickest of the entry times, 26, 27-26, uh, I should say, for Hallis from Slovakia. Yeah, Mikel Struder's there in seven. It's lucky lane seven here in the 50 breaststroke. He leads at the halfway mark. Sabev from Bulgaria at the top of screen. Also swimming well and through the middle. Here comes Hallis in that black cap. But Struder's, we've seen him in the sprint freestyle events, make semi-finals before. He does just get his hands on the wall first, 26.47. Schroeder's ahead of Sabav. And uh, we're starting to see more swimmers go under 27 seconds here. So really starting to heat up through five of nine heats. Plenty of action to come. And Mikkel Schroeder's the 24-year-old on the finish there. A oh, really short stroke to finish off. Two short strokes at the end. And uh, again, they look at the finish. They need to have a breaststroke kick, toes pointing outwards. They cannot dolphin kick onto that finish. So he touches the wall first. Mikel Schroeder's we still need to wait for the official results to come through. It's a common theme in the sprint breaststroke now. I think you'll find there will be a disqualification here. I think Schroeder's is going to be okay. But it seems more focused on... Oh, that's, ex that's exactly what you're not allowed to do. But... Uh, if he touched the wall before he did that downward dolphin kick, then, then that's okay. Schroeder's was safe. It looks like he's going to be safe. I'm not sure if that was Schroeder's on the, uh, on the finish there. But uh, that's a good example of what the officials are actually looking for. There is at least one disqualification in that previous heat. I think it, uh, it's going to involve the swimmer from lane number one from Bulgaria, Sabev. I think uh, he might find himself disqualified. But Schroeder should be okay. Schroeder's is okay. And Lizavets ends up a second with uh, Sabah if it is disqualified. Lane one. Up 
to heat number six here. Now McKee was to this was to start in lane three. El Kamash and Dominguez Ramos, Egypt and the Dominican Republic in four and five here. And big start here for Zaboynik of the Czech Republic in lane number six in the white cap. He turns in front in second place, right alongside him, Dominguez Ramos. And going OK down there in lane number seven as well, it's Gilbert of New Zealand who may have just about taken over. This is awfully tight. Look at lane five, I think. Gilbert just edging out, edging in for the win. Wow, what a good swim that was by Josh Gilbert. 21-year-old, and he records a time, 26.95. Excellent racing. Murillo Valdez, it was, of Colombia, grabbing second, and Willis in third. Yeah, he had a nice smooth stroke there. There is off the blocks in lane seven. Not much separated them across the whole pool there. This is what the racing is going to be like through these faster seated heats. It's all about timing on the finish. It becomes such a, a power and skill event now. The short course 50 fly, short course 50 breaststroke. It's about executing those skills to start the turn, the timing on the wall, and of course, power, power, power on every single stroke. So we wait for the result to become official. It's uh, looks all right underwater there off the first replay. Josh Gilbert, under 27 seconds. So we just have to wait. Wait and see if everyone's given the green light here. Josh Gilbert, lane seven. You mentioned a little while ago, lucky lane seven. It's uh, got a decent strike rate this morning. I wonder if they're going to factor these video reviews in the timeline now for the mm. 50 breaststroke at Future World Championships. It's, um, you know, it's, it's happening every, every every heat after heat two, pretty much. We saw it in Abu Dhabi. We see it now in, in Melbourne. And that's where we are right now. Not too far from the CBD. In fact, about two kilometres walking distance. And uh, it is a city full of wonderful sporting facilities let's have a look at this result now there was a disqualification valdez was disqualified but gilbert is okay 26.95 taking his heat heat number six heat seven now and now we get to some of the the big names here nick fink in lane number four michael andrew has got lane number two Jan Zibe in six. A big start there from uh, Prana Fernandez of Paraguay in lane number one. Fink, the winner of the 100, the defending champion four. Yeah, good start from Bell down there in that gold cap of Australia as well. Racing the breaststroke here at these World Championships. It's Bell at the 25. Watch for Fink in the middle of the pool. The ultimate racer, Nick Fink, winner of the 100. Still with a bit of work to do. Michael Andrew not too far away. And that's uh, that's Yan from China. Who's it going to be on the finish? It is Yan ZB. Chinese swimmer. Wow, not much in that at all. 26.06. And uh, geez, only 0.1 of a second through the first five competitors there at the touch. Touching the wall first is one thing. The results being official is the next one. This is the turn. A little bit of a sneaky kick there on the turn. I'm not sure who that was. So they're looking for a downward dolphin kick on the finish. They're going to review every single heat from now on. There's Yance, third from the right. He does touch first, and he does take the heat. Well, they're more than happy there. That was a, a quick review. Jan Zibbe taking it out, 26.06. Vink, a hundredth of a second back there in second place. Got the world record holder here, Sakchi in lane number four. And Adam Peaty finds himself in lane one. Mm. Gomez Jr., bronze medalist in Abu Dhabi in lane five. 36 years of age. 
Beattie in the red cap, lane one. Right Summer in three, Sakshi, our world record holder in lane number four. And quickly starting there, Gomez Jr., the 36-year-old, in lane number five. At the halfway point, Beattie it is in front. In second place, it'll be Sakshi and then Gomez Jr. It's the red cap of the Brit, Beattie. Right up the top of the screen, and he's in front, and he should take this out. Beattie it is, who takes it out from Gomez Jr. and Sakshi. Very nice, very nice. 26.01 for Adam Petey. Out of lane one there. He's able to match him off the start. He's told everybody this week he doesn't like racing, short course racing, but he's just here to improve his skills and much improved they are. Powerful off the blocks. One of the strongest swimmers when it comes to being in the weight room is Adam Petey. And he knows he needs to improve these skills to remain at the top of the sprint breaststroke world rankings. And uh, there's plenty of big names in that field. Sachi is the world record holder from Turkey. 24-9 he swam the week after the world championships last year. He was disqualified in Abu Dhabi, coming in as the red hot favorite. Then didn't get to race this in the final. Then he swims in his homeland, Turkish nationals couple of days later just before Christmas and demolish the world record and goes 24-9. He doesn't look like he's in that sort of form here. Sachi with a 26-2 is 1.3 seconds over his world mark, over his personal best time. But Adam Petey, he is not at his best, but he's swimming well. 26-01. And uh, the crowd enjoying a little bit of sunshine now. Plenty of time to relax through this men's 50 breaststroke. Plenty of time to enjoy the sunshine. Now, Gomez Jr. was disqualified. He was second home, but Petey from Sakshi, so it means that Williamson is elevated to third. And uh, the final heat now, heat number nine, with Nicolo Martinengi and uh, Sarah Sawalo in lanes four and five here. Three finalists from Budapest here, Matsarath in one, uh, Martin Engi and Sarasualo. And they head down the first of two laps here and uh, in lanes four and five, Martin Engi, the winner of the 100 in Budapest, here's our leader. In second place, it'll be Katsi of France down there in lane number one, alongside him, Coco of Finland. But uh, as they head to the wall, it's Martin Engi. Martin Engi who wins it. And in second place, Sarah Swalo with Italy. Winning time here, 25.71. Very good there from Matanengi. Easily the fastest through heats this morning. 25.7. He flies off the blocks. Really gets his arms over the top. And uh, puts a lot of power into that start off the dive. Here's the finish. He's a pure breaststroker, Martin Engi. He's not going to be in danger of that downward kick. Now the swimmers, they can they can kick downwards if their toes are pointing outwards in that, that breaststroke kicking motion. They can kick downwards and get their hips up at the finish, but they can't butterfly kick down. They can't have those feet flat or those toes pointing backwards and do a downward kick. So it's, I'm finding it hard to put into words what exactly uh, the ruling and the, the terminology is, but um, that's the common disqualification at the moment. And uh, we're going to review this one again. Uh, Martinengi looks safe. Really impressive swim there to take the ninth feet. Your smiles all around there, so no disqualifications in the last Martinengi 25 71, Sirisualo in second, and Stevens of Slovenia finishing in third place. So we've Worked our way through the heats here, through to the semi-finals. Martin Engi with the fastest. Adam Peaty is uh, going to be a force to be reckoned with. 25.71, the quickest of the times. We get down to a swim-off here. Niyama of Japan with a time 26.51. So there will be a swim-off for 16th between he and Koko of Finland. 
That's uh, 2661 as well. So that for the last spot in the semis, that's two swim offs we've got coming up at the end of the program, I would imagine. Yeah, it's got to be the end of the program, doesn't it? Semi finals tonight. Yes. Yes, it'll definitely be this morning. Um, but the 800 freestyles to go, so in this event, um, the 50 breaststroke, the, the swimmers will have about 30 to 40 minutes, I'd say at least. There must be a minimum rule there. Look at those disqualifications. Okay, we're going there. to have a swim off next, Bobby. Um, not from that event, but the earlier one, of course. So that'll be before our last scheduled event here. That's the men's 800 metres freestyle slowest heat. So this one, a swim off between Dahlia. In fact, uh, Dahlia, this is the world record there. Dahlia, she's not here. The swim off is actually between uh, Castelluso and Lartman. Castelluso in lane number four. Yeah, swim off for 16th spot. So the winner of this swim off will compete in the semi finals tonight. Castelluso probably winning the start there over Lartman. It is uh, Australia and Finland, but uh, underwater work excellent by Lartman. She comes up in front and she's going to lead just at the halfway point. Little peep over to the left there by Castelluso. And she's got a bit of work to do to try to catch Lartman, who's le leading now by half a length. And she's got this one all wrapped up. Yeah, Lartman Lartman. out fast. 100 butterfly here, so she will be aggressive through that first 50. Lartman, the 200 butterfly finalist at these championships. So she wants to push Castelluso and try and break her through the first three laps. A little long onto the wall. The home crowd can sense Castelluso coming. But Lartman with this handy lead. Maybe Castelluso starting to close the gap, but she's... Uh, Left it a bit like Lartman it was. Over the 100. Not the 50 there. Lartman over Castelluso. So she takes a spot in the semi-finals. She is pumped. 56.88. It's a second faster than what she went this morning in the heat. That's a huge improvement from just a few hours ago. Castelluso also improves from their heat performance. They tied at 57.85. Larson and 56.88. That would have actually placed her ninth after the heats if she was able to produce that type of swim earlier this morning. So you can see the satisfaction she gets, not only with winning the swim off, but just posting that time and that really strong performance. So Larson taking that spot over Castelluso. And you never know what can happen from there. Now the men's 800 metres freestyle. The world record has stood for 14 years now. It was set here in Melbourne by Grant Hackett, who we saw presenting medals the other night. 723.42. There's the field. Two slowest heats to be contested here. Norway and Spain. Jon Vent and uh, Garash Benito in lanes four and five here. Falcon, Katia, Polyacek, and lane number seven, we've got uh, Toma Nontakot of Thailand, Yan Chirvan Lin. So the 800 metres, this is uh, the first of the slowest heats as they're known. Heat number one, Falcon of Cuba in one, Katia of Malta in two, Polyacek of Slovakia, then Jongvent of Norway. We've got Garash Benito of, uh, of Spain there in lane number four. Lane number uh, lane number five, that was uh, Garash Benito. Lane number six, 
It is uh, the swimmer from Thailand there. That's uh, Tama Nontakot and uh, Yanches of Bulgaria in seven, followed by Lin of Macau in lane number eight. The quickest of the entry times here is 7.52.21 for Yonvent. Yeah, this is uh, the first of two heats this morning in this men's 800 freestyle. First time they're holding this event on the, uh, the World Short Course Program. Traditionally, it's only been the men's 1500 free and the women's 800 free, but with the, the new additions of the Olympic events that we saw in Tokyo last year, which were the men's 800 free and the women's 1500, they now are placed onto the World Short Course Championship program. So we're looking for a new title holder in this event. Um, the long course crown was given to, not given to, but won by Paul Trineri, the great Italian swimmer, distance swimmer there in Budapest. And he had an iconic performance in the 1500 free in Budapest as well to take the distance double. So he will swim tonight. The eight fastest entry times coming into these championships. They'll race in what's going to be called the fastest heat tonight. But swimmers from this morning's performances are eligible to win medals should they be fast enough. Just like we saw yesterday in the women's 1500 with Kenzie McMahon from the United States. She won the bronze medal after swimming in one of the early heats. So... They've just gone past 200 metres. The 800 free is... Uh, it's almost like an extension of the 400 rather than looking at it as half the 1500 free. So the swimmers will know to still get into their rhythm, get into those pacings, but especially in the short course pool, they'll want to be a little bit more aggressive through the middle part of this race rather than settle into, into a slower 1500 meter freestyle rhythm. So doing that, the best of them this morning is the swimmer from Spain, the 18 year old Carlos Garek Benito. The Spanish men, they've uh, made a few freestyle relay finals here at these championships, which is, a, which is a great performance. So the swimmer from Spain leads from Jonvent. The Norwegian in four, and Tamanantikot is in third position at the moment. Still 19 laps to go. You can see down on the bottom right of screen the meter eater just as they progress through this race. You can see 19, now 18 laps to go, and they turn at the 350, and uh, just as that red line edges towards the right side of screen, It'll help you indicate just how much further is left to go in this event. The 18-year-old Spaniard, Carlos Garash Benito, with that entry time we've spoken about, 7.52.73. So a little on the entry times between Garash Benito and Jon Vent of Norway. But uh, at the moment... It's uh, Garash Benito, who's well in front in second place. It is the swimmer there from uh, from Thailand, and that is uh, Tama Nontakot, whose entry time was uh, well over the eight, so 8.08. He's looking to improve upon that. And in third place, it's uh, Jon Vent, as indicated. Fourth at the moment would be uh, Polichuk of the Slovakia in lane number four. But they really are spread out at the moment. And uh, this is uh, an impressive performance by Garash Benito. The slowest heats, of course, will have another slowest heat after this and then the fastest heat this evening. And uh, it's going to be Gregorio Poltroneri in lane number four there. So he will be the hot favourite for the gold medal. But as we've spoken about throughout the championships, when it comes to the distance races, it's not simply a matter of an outright final. It's a matter of... Um, looking at the times in the slowest heats and seeing how they stack up against the times in the fastest heat. And we had the situation last night in the 1500 for women where the winner of the second slowest heat ended up taking the bronze medal. So she was uh, that was Mackenzie of um, the United States. She was out here watching the action in the evening and called upon to take a bronze medal. 
yeah, nice way to uh, to get your first World Championship medal, to to be in the stands watching. You've already done your job in the pool. And uh, edge of the seat stuff it was for Kenzie McMahon there. But uh, back to the action, it's the swimmer in four. There he is on the way back, Carlos Garak Benito. He's uh, swam well there. They're well over halfway now, turning at the 600. Only 200 metres to go. He really lays off the legs, sort of a very similar style to what we saw from Lani Pallister in the 1500 last night. But again, a much shorter race is this 800. He can't wait to the last 25. There's no point resting those legs for too long. He'll want to try and bring them in with at least 100 metres to go. And uh, he's well in front. He's going to win this heat. But again, the time, the swimmers, the sport, it's all revolves around times and how those rankings and performances can just gradually improve and get better and better. And uh, Garak Benito, still only young at 18. His entry time is 7.52.73, 7.52. So he's going to turn here at, we'll see what he turns at. 100 meter mark, he's holding about 58 seconds, 58 high per 100 meters, so 646. He'd be looking at something around 744 would be a good swim. Maybe quicker if he can start to use his legs a bit more. So he's uh, got less than 100 to go, make it 75 to go now. Three laps, Carlos Garash Benito, 18 year old from Spain. Bobby Fink, of course, has emerged as probably the number one out of the distance swimmers these days for the men. But, um, and, of course, he's from the United States. But the Europeans generally have got such a strong record in uh, the 800 and the 1500 metres. And here's Carlos Garash Benito from Spain putting his name up there by trying to record a good time here in this first heat. And he goes in, and he's going to stop the clock in a time here of 7.44.53. Uh, 7.44.53, so that's about uh, eight seconds inside the entry time there. In second place, a good swim by um, Rarawit Tomanondakot, swimmer there from Thailand. And uh, then it was John Jonfint of Norway in third place in... So 7.55 for second, so a margin of um, around 10 and a half seconds between first and second there in heat one. Yes, Garak Benito just held those 58 second average per 100 metres, so doing a bit of quick math, 7.44, that's 16 seconds under eight minute pace, or under eight minutes, which is a minute pace, so right on 58.0. Uh, as an average split, so when he goes back to training with his coach back in Spain, they do some short course distance sets. He'll want to be holding 57s at training to give him a bit of confidence that he's going to go quicker next time. Let's have a look at the result then. And Garash Benito with 7.44. Tom Anondekot in second place, 7.55. On to the second heat now. Here's the start list there. Turkey and Egypt in the middle lanes there. And uh, looks like Johansson is not starting there. So lane three will be vacant. with heat two where the quickest of the entry times here are 743 much the same as uh, we saw from Garash Benito in the previous but of course these swimmers are looking to lower that time again it's Gemev of the Czech Republic in lane number one Alba of Argentina as I mentioned Johansson not starting in lane three uh, Kilovuts of Turkey in lane number four Elkamash 
of Egypt is the swimmer in five. Louis Clark of New Zealand in six. Charlie Clark of the USA in seven. And Kim Woo Min of Korea, the swimmer out there in lane number eight. And it is the extreme lanes in the early stages here. Gemov and Kim who uh, have opened up a tiny little lead. They're also Alba of Argentina going well in lane two. Yeah, well, we know Kim from Korea. He uh, just missed the 400 free final. He was a finalist in Budapest, so he's got a good distance freestyle pedigree. He'll be good in this one, as will Charlie Clark in lane seven. He really swam a strong 1500 on the first day of competition and uh, really locks into that pace the whole way. It's Gemov in one, swimming quite aggressively through the first part of this race. It, it's got an entry time of 750. It almost, it's, it's definitely not an 800 meter freestyle stroke. Uh, it would be um, tough to think that he could sustain this even for 400 meters. So a part of me thinks he might be trying to post a 200 meter time or a 400 meter time before starting to switch off because he's really, you can see how much uh, more legs he's using, how much uh, many more strokes he's using in this. So he's swimming aggressively. This is the 200 meter mark. We'll just see what his intentions are. He turns 150.1. It's uh, just one second outside of world record pace coming out of the slow heats. So he's pushing it. It's going to hurt for Gemov. I uh, would think he, he might just be trying to post the 400 meter freestyle time because I don't want to throw him under the bus, but it's going to be a long second half of the race for Gemov in lane one. So it wasn't the 200 uh, metre time that he was looking to post because we're beyond that. We've gone 250 now and uh, he's maintaining that aggressive style, the aggressive rate. So perhaps it is the 400. Perhaps he'll try to do it all the way through to the 800. Who knows? But uh, it's Gemev with the Czech Republic, this 23-year-old. 7.50.16 was his entry time. And uh, he continues to try to really force the issue out there. So he's got a handy lead at the moment. The question is, how long can he maintain that? Around about two and a half seconds. Uh, Kim Woo Min, the 21-year-old from Korea, down there in lane eight. He's holding down second. In lane number five, it's El Kamash. El Kamash, uh, incidentally, competed on the FINA World Cup circuit. He won the 800 metres in the event in Toronto and this entry time is 7.45.09. So he has been competing on the international stage um, in the 800s. Some of these other swimmers in the early heats don't have a lot of form you can judge them by. Yeah, well, as we mentioned before, it's a, it's a new event to the World Short Course Program, so... Um, that world record from Grant Hackett, the oldest in the books, swam in this aquatic centre, Melbourne, but an indoor pool back in 2008, 7.23. Uh, a turn up the 400, that's Gemov, still going strongly, 3.46. So he's split the 100 metre mark, 53, then 57, 57, and 58 and a half. So he's certainly dropping off, but he didn't stop. So it's a brave swim from the swimmer from Czech Republic. You can see that strokes just starting to slow down. Kim down there in lane eight, two seconds behind, not looking too strong either is Kim. He was a part of that four by two freestyle relay final last night. That was at about 10 p.m. So it's a tough backup and El Kamash, like you said, the Egyptian, um, he likes this middle of the longer race this is 800 free he's made a move since turning at the 400 starting at the legs involved so El Kamash and Charlie Clark probably look the best of the swimmers here in heat two at the moment you mentioned Hackett's world record here at the indoor pool of course swimming pools these days in the old days they used to talk about uh, fast pools and so on there's uniformity over pools worldwide these days for international events but what about the difference indoor and outdoor um, the, the effect on times the wind can be a factor with uh, outdoor pools of course indoor again there's uniformity there but uh, what what about the uh, the difference in say Hackett's conditions than the swimmers have now i, I think um when it comes to the actual swimming and the, the, the racing and the performing, it's all 
the same because everyone's under the same conditions where, when you're at that actual competition. But if you were to compare indoor and outdoor, it's everything else that goes around it. So what are you wearing behind the blocks? Where are you warming up? You see all the all the swimmers warm, prefer to warm up indoor than they do outdoor. Um, you know, are you going to sit in the stand in the sun for six hours the day before and cheer on your teammates? So it's all of that that comes into play. How draining is the week going to be? Because you have outdoor conditions, whether that be hot or cold. Um, I remember in Rome, 2009, outdoors, 40 degree heat. I swam the 1500 free at about 1 p.m. You know, in the Italian summer, um, just totally overheating in there. Um, so since then, we've seen all these major meets in an, in an indoor venue. Um, but yeah, it, it, hard to how to actually say the actual effect on the on the performance. But, yeah, the, um, the peripheral issues, though, and, and as you say, things like uh, the swimmers coming out from behind the blocks, uh, they've got to keep warm. In Indoors, it's not so much the case. Anyway, we'll get back to this race because we've got, uh, what, just on 100 to go now. And uh, the uh, leader now, El Kamash, who, as I mentioned, brought in some good form, a good time into this event. Second place, uh, two lanes across. It's Charlie Clark of the USA. Gemov, who was so aggressive early, has uh, dropped back into uh, third place at the moment, but uh, he's got a fair margin between first, second and third. Yeah, this, uh, these boys are really heating up here. That's El Kamash and Clark. They're sprinting. They're in a good battle, which is going to push them. They're on pace to go around about 7.35 or 36, and that at the moment, looking at the times for tonight's finalists, would, have, would put them third. So if El Kamash, it looks like he's going to take this. Anything under 7.35, he'll be stoked with. Marwan El Kamash of Egypt. About to record a good time here in heat two of the 800 metres. It's 7.36.01. 7.36.01 for El Kamash. So we'll keep that in mind for this evening. And you never know, it could be... A repeat of what happened in the women's 1500 metres last night when a swimmer from an early heat was able to claim a medal. A great swim. Really strong performance there from Marwan El a 29-year-old from Egypt. We've seen him at this level for a long, long time now. And uh, puts his name in the mix. Just throws down the benchmark performance this morning. 7.36.01. This is the finish. He was really pushed over those last couple hundred metres by Charlie Clark, the American. And um, again, one heat to come tonight, but that's going to be a really competitive time. 7.36.01 for El Kamash and 7.37.54 for Charlie Clark. Gemma have ended up in third placing. So in terms of um, the combination of each one and two here, El Kamash obviously with that quickest time from Clark and Gemma. The times going the way of the seedings, effectively. The two heats, the quickest of the heats, heat two. Now that men's 50 metres breaststroke swim off. There's the record, Sachi, with that world record. Lane number four here, it's going to be the Yama. And uh, Coco of Finland. So Finland involved in another swim off here, just as they were for the women a short time ago. 50 metres breaststroke. Saki Niyama in lane number four. Oli Koko of Finland in lane number five. Koko marginally quicker off the blocks there. He's the man in the white cap. So Koko it is, Niyama as they turn at the 25. Little between them, it's the Finn who's in front and he's going to be very difficult to catch from there. It's on the stroke though, it's on the stroke and it is Coco who takes it out. 26-24, 26-50 the armor. So, as we had with the women's swim off a moment ago, it's the Finns who go through to the semi-finals. Yeah, big morning for Finland to add a two on the swim-offs. 
He had a huge dive, did Coco. Very fast there, hands to feet, tucking those knees in. This is the finish. He had the race. Well won there. Uh, 26-2-4. That time, again, would have placed him ninth, just like we saw from Lartman, if they were able to, to swim that quick in the heats this morning. We will we'll see Oli Coco tonight in the semi-finals of this event, the men's 50-metre breaststroke. Yes, so a couple of swim-offs, uh, two heats of the 800 metres, and of course the heat sessions, uh, just the uh, the little teasers as far as what will occur in the big sessions, the finals and semi-final sessions in the evening, and uh, the uh, this evening's will get underway in uh, around about uh, just under six hours from now, five and three quarter hours from now. Plenty to look forward to this evening. We'll check exactly what is ahead of us a little bit later on. But uh, we might, before that, uh, have a look at some of the highlights this morning. And there's been plenty, Bobby. In fact, there's plenty of highlights. Whenever we have international swimming, 170 countries and about 750, I think it is, uh, athletes who are here. Let's first of all have a look at what is in store tonight. And uh, we've got six finals and semi-finals and another four events. We start with those uh, medley relays, the 4x50s, the women followed by the men. Uh, 100 butterfly. We've got the 400 individual medley with those heats this morning. And uh, also the 800 metres, that's earlier on that fastest heat where we'll bear in mind the times here from the earlier heat as well. Semi-finals of the 50 breast. And uh, then we'll have the really quick ones. The 50 metres freestyle for women and men. They'll be the last of the individual races. Great program for this evening. Great program this morning as well, Bobby. Yes, the penultimate morning of heats have concluded here at the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre. Just one day to go. We saw the Australian women perform strongly in the 4x50 metre medley relay. And... Uh, also narrowly qualifying was the team from the United States. We saw the men's and women's 400 individual medley. Di Seto, the world record holder in this event. We'll see if he can make it two gold medals in two nights. He'll race from lane four in tonight's final. The women's 100 fly, Louise Hansen, back on the blocks. She swam well this morning, as did this man, Ponty, from Switzerland, throwing down the fastest time of the morning. A new Swiss record, 48.81 seconds. More short and fast action soon followed. The women's 50 breaststroke, there are a host of disqualifications, but Ruta Malutite, she moves safely through to the semifinals. She'll be looking to avenge the disappointment from her 100 meter race earlier at these championships and move through to tomorrow night's final where she should threaten for the gold. And we saw the men's 800 freestyle, the Egyptian Marwan El Kamash swimming a personal best time of 7.36.01 to smash the Egyptian record and put his name in the mix for medals tonight. Yes, medals tonight in six events right here under the roof at the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre. There's going to be a huge crowd on hand, a noisy crowd on hand, as has been the case throughout the first four nights of finals. It all happens in a few hours from now. We look forward to your company then here in Melbourne.